It's Wednesday night, and that means it's time for the Lamar Thomas Show, featuring the greatest receiver in the history of college football. Just ask them. Lamar Thomas. I was born in uh, Ocala, Florida. I moved to Gainesville to go to high school. Been recruited probably since the ninth grade, illegally, I might add, by the University of Florida. I, I still can remember Coach Solinger, Don Solinger, coming out to our practice one day. Here it is, this guy comes out in the University of Miami jacket, and, and I, I said, I can't believe that's Miami out here. And, you know, I wanted to go up and say, hey, I'm Lamar Thomas. And, and actually, I, I did walk up to him and I said, hey, Coach, uh, I'm Lamar Thomas. And he said, I know. And that was the start of my uh, relationship with the uh, University of Miami. Pat, another good block, and Toretta lays it up. come down here, you'll be on TV every weekend dominating. I thought about it. I said, man, where do I sign? My mom, uh, on Saturday mornings, I would wake up and she'd be holding my hand. I thought she was the weirdest lady in the world. <laughs> but she was holding my hands and she would be rubbing them and saying, one day these hands are gonna make you a lot of money. <laughs> um, she was smart. So now, here he is. The great one, along with co-host Gary Furman of Kingsport.com, Lamar Thomas. There he is. Can you hear me, LT? I can hear you, my friend. And I can hear you. We, you made it to the start line. Um, oh. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Lamar Thomas show been a little bit of a hectic last five minutes or so, but, uh, <laughs> but we got it done. We got it here with the, the modern wonders of technology have come Ooh. through and there he is live and in living color, the great one, Lamar Thomas. And, uh, we welcome you to another Wednesday night of the Lamar Thomas show presented by Canes Ware and several other sponsors that we will be talking about in a minute. And I'm going to get them up on the screen right now. Um, we got a really, really, really special show for you guys tonight. Uh, Heisman Trophy winner Gino Toretta is going to be joining us, and this is a big week for Gino. Uh, you know, uh, obviously you win the Heisman. That's the pinnacle of college football. Uh, this weekend, Gino's having his jersey retired by the University of Miami, and, uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to be interested. I'm going to be interested, Lamar, to hear Gino – comment on what what's more significant to him the Heisman trophy that sits I assume in his living room that he looks at every day or the <laughs> fact that his jersey is about to be retired by the U and will forever you know hang up um, mm -hmm. it, it, I guess at Hard Rock as long as they're playing at Hard Rock um, and any other future stadiums that they play at um, you know you know Gino very well mm -hmm. you have mm -hmm. a great great hand in what he was able to accomplish. Uh, what do you think will mean more to him? You know, I, I, I think that the whole body of work as far as what he was able to accomplish during that time, um, and it's a great, I mean, this is, a, this is one of the highest honors you could, you could get, you know, uh, to be up in your stadium uh, where, your, where your college plays their, their game, the ring of honor, as they say. Um, uh, and, and getting your and getting your jersey retired. I mean, you 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 basically have done everything possible. And it, him and Sapper, are two of the most decorated canes of all time. So, uh, you know, once Gino's jersey is retired, they probably should do Saps. But for those guys to set out on that journey and to get everything they deserve after the game is over, I think it's awesome. Uh, two of the greatest players that ever played. Gino had an outstanding career. 
at the University of Miami. I was there with him, uh, so I'm a little biased uh, the whole time. So I got to see his maturing process. Um, got to see him go through some ups and downs and uh, watch what he was able to do for us and win ball games. And that's what he was. He's a winner, and uh, that's what I I can take away from 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 Gino. He's a winner. I don't think you're going to see Saps jersey retired anytime soon after that tweet <laughs> after that tweet he sent out last week just being honest i i i mean like he he might have burned that bridge <laughs> well yeah. it, it's like anything gary I, I i truly believe this and, it, and it's and it's unfortunate that um that when you leave it in the hands of other people um feelings get involved it's just like anything hall of fame um you know there's some guys that should be in the the NFL Hall of Fame, but feelings are involved, and they've done some things maybe in the past. But uh, the point is, what you set out to do, you accomplished. And, you know, if you do cocaine, if you've been uh, accused of killing somebody, uh, you know, these things happen, and you eventually get in. And just like with Sap, um, you know, hey, whatever he's done, it doesn't matter what he's done. What he what he did when he was playing, he deserves to be in. Just like with Geno, they deserve to have all the honors they get, whether they say anything negative about the program from this point on. I truly believe that because of the body of work they put in, they should be able to get that. Now, how they're accepted after that, that's on them. But I, I, I think that no matter what Sap tweets or says, he still deserves to have the same honors uh, as the highest. I mean – <laughs> it, it's hard, man. It's it's hard when I see other guys uh, going to the NFL Hall of Fame, um, and some guys deserve to go in, but feelings are involved, and maybe they've done some things that people didn't like. But the point is, as a player, they did everything they were supposed to do. You can't take O.J. Simpson out of the Hall of Fame. You can't. Sorry. You can't take Michael Irvin. I don't care if he goes and does 100 lines. You can't take him out of the Hall of Fame. So yeah. it is what it is. Yeah, it's an interesting, in, interesting viewpoint. You know, I mean, I think uh, posting a picture of the quarterback getting led off the field in handcuffs, might, mm -hmm. you know, took it a little bit, a little bit extreme. But uh, <laughs> you know, I don't he, know. He's, he's passionate, coach. He, hey, hey, he's just as passionate as anybody else. He's hurt. You know, he, 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 he wants to see this program do well. We all bleed orange and green. Now we might voice it in different ways, just like uh, talking to Mario. You know, we've had disagreements, but the point is we're all hurricanes and we're all trying to get there. It's just that some people go about it different ways. And you being the head coach, you can't do certain things. Sap, being Sap, he can do whatever he wants to do. He's not getting paid by the university. So whatever he says is what he says. Now, but we all want the same thing. We want to win. We all want to get back to the glory days. It's just that we're all going about it different ways. And, you know, it, it is what it is. All right. Well, we have so many things to unwrap here before oh, yeah. uh, before Gino uh, comes on in about in about twenty minutes. So, uh, but the first thing I'll say is tonight's show is presented by Canesware. You see Lamar in the store there. You see the store behind me here tonight. Canesware has the largest collection of Miami Hurricanes gear ever assembled. Uh, you can go to their uh, shop at their store at twenty six fifty five South University Drive in Davie, or you can go to Canesware.com. Um, the Florida Beach Bowl is also a, a sponsor of the Lamar Thomas show. They will be coming to drive pink stadium. LT, you know, no one's wearing that jacket down here. Hey, anytime. For all you up north people. Okay. <laughs> you're coming down to come to games. Get you some of this gear, baby. If I was up north and I was a hurricane fan, I definitely would rock this. You know, this is sweet. I love these best, man. Come on in here. We got, a, we got about 10 or 12 of them. You better hurry up where they go. Just go on. If you live up north and you have use for that jacket, just go on caneswear.com right now and, and order that. Hours and order. A day. 24 they'll, seven. <laughs> they'll, they'll, now that Lamar's put it on, they'll they'll be blowing them out here in, over the next hour or two. Um, but the Florida Beach Bowl is also a sponsor of the Lamar Thomas Show, and uh, they have a bowl game coming to Drive Pink Stadium in a few weeks for historically black colleges. And A.C. Tellison, who we now can reveal after all these weeks of mystery, we now can finally reveal that A.C. Tellison is behind the Florida Beach Bowl. Right. He will be joining us in the 9 o'clock hour tonight. We're looking forward to that. The law firm of Rotson and Faxadomo 
Can't forget them. If you ever get yourself in a bind, uh, maybe for doing some of the things Lamar was describing a moment ago, um, <laughs> you can call Mickey over there at Rats and Effects at Domo, and uh, they will make sure that they give you the best representation possible. They're aggressive. They're good. Um, so they'll be their sponsor of tonight's show. Uh, Williamson Cadillac, where Lamar goes to buy all his uh, cars. Uh, you can go down there and see Jermaine Chambers, former Kane, is in the finance department. He will he will absolutely hook you up with the best deal <laughs> on a new Cadillac. And um, LT, who else? Do we have a sandwich tonight? Oh, yeah, yeah. We definitely got the sandwich. Hold on. We can't, we can't forget La Spada Sub Shop Spada. next door to Kane's Wear, right where they hook up Lamar with his ham and cheese sandwich. Oh, and Doritos this week. They threw in a bag of Doritos. Right. Ham um, and cheese. His ham and cheese from La Spada, honestly, the best sub shop in South Florida. Uh, they good. don't mess around, man. Uh, you might need to get your cholesterol checked by the time you're done <laughs> e eating one of their sandwiches because there's so much meat in there. But uh, really, really phenomenal subs. And you can go to La Spada's anytime you go to Cane's where they're right next door. So have a little lunch, shop for some Cane's gear. Doesn't get any better than that. If it's Saturday and you're going to the Louisville game, you could stop and get some tailgating food. And um, and some new clothes to wear, and then head on over to Hard Rock Stadium. Just get an early start. Um, ask Ask Ken what time they're opening Saturday morning. I hope they're, they're opening open at uh, seven. Ken, what time? Seven? I think seven. Yeah, we'll have to double check that. But they'll okay. they'll be open early Saturday morning since it's a noon home game. Uh, so LT, don't don't forget Florida's life. Don't wait. Don't forget life. The gym. Oh, I forgot life to gym where, oh, where Lamar's where, where Lamar's wife goes to get bruised up. That's right. I can't forget <laughs> life. Um, yeah, they they do a great job training. You know, max max training and it's probably a CrossFit. They get people in great shape. Life Life Athletics, one twenty three thirty Southwest fifty third Street in Cooper City. Uh, you see it down there on the screen, and we'll talk about them more as the show goes on as well. But LT, I got to get to this Florida State experience okay. on Saturday. Uh, wow, something else, man. Something else. Uh, you know, these kids are playing their butts off. Okay, mm -hmm. they, they they really are, and just nothing's going right, man. It's like, you know, nothing's going right, and you know, I know they've had problems at quarterback, but mm -hmm. I mean, there's some other things going on too. I mean. You know, I don't, I don't know, I don't know enough about what it is. So I don't want to get too crazy here. Right. But like, we are not putting a representative passing game out on the field. Let's be honest. I mean, you know, if, if they don't hit that that eighty yard play to Jacoby George when the two FSU guys basically ran into each other and took themselves out of the play, um, you're looking at about 120 yards passing on the road against the number four team in the country. I don't care how well your defense plays, and they couldn't have played much better. I mean, you had cornerbacks that had barely played, locking down two of the best receivers in the country. I mean, Deion Coleman had, I think it was 20, 24 yards receiving in that game. Mm -hmm. He might be a first-round draft pick, Lamar. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, what a job Miami's defense did, Lance Guidry did, unbelievable. Yep. I mean, they, they were dominant up front. Um, yep. The O-line, I thought, played decent. Um, you know, maybe not their best game of the year, but, but the competition was pretty damn good. Um, you know, they, they were able to bust, the, you know, three really good running plays in the, in the second quarter. And you, you still go home with a loss. And it's kind of like the story of the season. I mean, they've, they've lost four of their last six. The two they won were in overtime. Yet, and I wrote about this for our website tomorrow. I'm sitting here thinking, like, man, this program is really – improved and taken a step forward this year. Lamar, they're 10th in the ACC right now. I mean, it's, <laughs> put it all together for us. You know, it's, it's, they, they've gone to basically, we're going to win with our defense. That, that's the way I look at it. Um, you know, because they, they're going to run the ball, power, run the ball, whatever run game they got up going up the middle, whichever way they get there, nothing too much side to side, no, not too many trick plays. Uh, they'll throw some screens here and there, but they're basically controlling the game by the play calling. And, uh, 
and it's been very uh, vanilla. You know, you, you, Texas A&M game, I was, you know, we were hyped. We were geeked up. You know, um, they played well against Texas A&M, showed a lot of movement. And it seems like from that point on, it's just kind of going downhill. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. It just, it just seems like they've said, okay, listen, we're not going to let we're not going to let our quarterbacks lose the game. We're going to run the ball. We're going to hope to break some plays, um, but we're not going to let our quarterbacks lose the game for us. We're not going to let that happen. So um, it's just it's 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 kind of boring in a way to watch. I'm Here's what bothers me. It, it's like if that's all, and and I understand you're playing a true freshman mm-hmm. in his second game on the mm-hmm. road at Joe Campbell Stadium. You're scared to death, okay? Yeah. But but the thing that bothers me, if that is what all you're going to be able to do, mm-hmm. then you can't go in that direction. You gotta ride with Tyler again. You have no choice. Okay. At some point you gotta hope that the real Tyler reemerges. I mean, mm-hmm. and obviously that's the situation they're in here for the Louisville game this weekend. And we talked to Tyler today, and man, he sounded like a whole different guy. Like, I don't know who's been talking to him or who he's been seeing or what he's doing. He seems to have cleared his head and is trying really hard to, to come into hard rock stadium Saturday in the right, in the right place mentally. But I just don't see how like, and, and you know, I feel for Mario and I feel for Shannon Dawson and I know none of this has gone the way they wanted it to this year, but you're not going and beating Florida state on the road. I don't care how physical you think you are. I don't care how good your offensive line is. Um, I mean, the defense couldn't have played any better. Lance Kidry can't possibly get those kids. It's not like you're you're going out there with first round draft picks. Well, by I, the way, you know, by the way, and I don't mean to cut you off. He's yeah, up for yeah, the Brawls show, Award. Man. He's he's up for the Brawls Award. Yeah, but, but you know we can't really say the Brawls Award down here. We lost a lot of credibility. Oh, because it got us. Yeah. <laughs> We lost yeah. a lot of credibility. I but. mean, he's he, he's not going to win it because they don't have the record. But it's it's nice to see Lance Gidry get some recognition. Yeah. He has done a spectacular job this year. Um, but I, you know, what I was getting at is you're not going up there and winning that game with 120 yards passing. There's just no way. I mean, you know, they hit. They did an unbelievable job hitting Florida State on those three running plays. Yes, but Florida State yeah. adjusted Lamar. And the screen. They hit him on the screen, too. Yeah. Uh, uh, but Florida yeah. State adjusted. And, and they started putting extra guys in the box, daring them to throw the ball. you got to be able to do it. Yeah. Well, you know that's what it was going to come down to. Uh, you look at – we were able to get away with it against Clemson. You know, they put everybody in the box and said, we're just going to stop the run. And we threw the ball well. Our receivers made some hell of plays. And we were able to pull the game out. But, you, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, you look at number 17, Emery, um, and what he was able to do. He made some good plays, but you could tell he was still a freshman, you know. And, um, yes. you know, it would be interesting to find to hear what was going through Geno's head, getting his uh, first – well, now I don't know if it was his first start, but going into Dope Campbell um, after Craig went down. And, you know, was there any change in the game plan or, you know, I, not that I know of, but, you know, what the thought process was, maybe what the coaches were telling him, you know. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's a big experience to be able to go up there. Um, I think this gives this kid, Emory Williams, uh, I think gives him confidence. And, you know, unfortunately he got hurt at the end, but, you know, he, he sold out. He sold out to get the first down and end up getting hurt. So, to me, that says a lot about who he is and about who this kid is, and I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to see him when he gets back. I mean, he he left a lasting impression on the fans. I mean, you got hurt stretching out to get a first down you to try to win down. the ball. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. But you know, I admit it. Uh, my frustration has runneth over. I mean, <laughs> I am. I, I am. I mean, I am so frustrated, uh, I, and I'm frustrated for Mario because I don't feel he has enough to show for the good work that they have done in the right. program. Um, you know, I was really bothered by the end of the first half. I didn't think they managed the last minute or two very well 
when they they got the ball down there and they could have spiked it and maybe gotten an extra play or two, try to score a mm-hmm. touchdown, and they ended up just settling for a field goal. Like, like that was that was screwed up. And then it was worse, Lamar. You get the ball back with four minutes left, and you got you you don't have a two you don't have a two minute offense. Hurry up, offense, scripted up and ready to go, man. I mean, you got a chance to turn two possessions there if you no. mm-hmm. if you if you play it right. You go down, you score, you 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 you, you know you you kick off to Florida State, you stop them, you get the ball back, and you have a chance to go kick a field goal to win the game. Four minutes is plenty of time to get that done. And man, we just let that four minutes just go by the wayside. I mean, um, you, you know, you think I, about, but, if, but if you watch the way we played all year, going into halftime, we just tried to go in there and then, you know, either have the lead or be tied or just play, you know, for that. And, you know, Florida State, you know, give them credit. They came out second half and said, hell with this, we're going to onside kick. And Frank Latson, of all great people. Play. Makes a great play to recover uh, the onside kick, and do we get any points out of that? I don't. I don't. Did we even? I think we might. Have um, three out of it. We might have gotten three out of it. I think yeah. we had three out of it. Yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, he made a great play. That was, I, I, man, we need that out there on the on the, uh, on the outside. I mean, hell, I know. You right? that, I know. Can great. you imagine? How does a kid that could make a play like that? He can't even sniff the field as a receiver. It's unbelievable. All right, let's bring in our um, our voice of the fan, Bruce Warner, who I know is uh, plenty fired up by the oh, yeah. uh, by uh, going on. I'm not fired uh, up anymore. I'm like you, Gary. I think the word for the fans, we're numb. I'm numb. I can't believe what I've seen this year. All the good and all the bad and all the mistakes. You know, we're talking about the record. Once again, he takes a knee. We're seven and three. Looks a lot better than six and four. That's just, you know, that's just what I think. But I'm looking at some of these things. Clock management has been a problem mm-hmm. all season, not just the other day. Would you agree? Mm-hmm. Timeouts and when he takes them, a problem all mm-hmm. season. Too many wasted. He's overly conservative, I think, which is what you guys just mentioned. And that adds to some of this stuff. Now, you know, the Van Dyke, as you said last year, Gary, there were a lot of outside influences that affected him. And, and I think it happened again this year for some reason or other. Maybe people are blowing smoke up his behind and he's struggling and, you know, he walks out of the stadium and there's stuff going on in his head and he can't figure it out. But, you know, there's issues in there, the tight end or the lack thereof. I mean, Lamar, you play with tight ends. The tight end is not there. Totally I, I, it must really be bad if he can't get on the field. Um, 84 can't catch. He's, he's open, but <laughs> once in a blue moon. And Arroyo's hurt. Now, that's a big help to a guy, a young kid or Van Dyke, to be able to check it down. He's got single coverage. We've had mm-hmm. tight ends for the last 40 years. So he's looking at the wide receivers. We all know he's had problems checking down and going to the, the, the running backs in the flat, which he still should be doing. And I think William should have been doing it as well. And I thought also well, last week, I thought um, that Fletcher was just slow to the hole. And Cheney was spectacular. He, he what a yes. difference between those two guys just on Saturday, and yet he comes back in the game in the fourth quarter with the same with same issues, running into the to the defensive guys and not moving, not spinning. There was a play he could have gone to his right and it taken it further. So it's not all on Van Dyke. There's a whole the whole offense is just not in sync anymore. Yeah, and, vision and that, vision by the running backs has been an issue all year. As yeah. well as they've done, they've missed a lot of holes. Yes, well, they have. I, I, I can tell you this. Watching, I think it was Cheney, run the ball. The two times he broke through the hole, my opinion, of course, I thought that he was making sure he protected the ball. Oh, yes. 100%. He doesn't so, want to do that again. Yeah. So I, that's just my opinion. I mean, as, as mad as I was, like, oh, man, why didn't he go see the right one? He was making sure he was protecting that football. And he was and, carrying people down the field on his back, too. Yeah, so I can't he, really – Fletcher doesn't do that often. They were gashing Florida State on those plays. But but the thing that I think they're missing is the anticipation of the next thing. Like, mm. when you're gashing Florida State like that in the second quarter, like, they're going in at halftime and they're adjusting to that. I mean, you got Randy they Shannon. Play, they play action. They play action. They came up to stop the run. They, Play yeah. action. Take chances. Dan, what are you doing? You're but playing like, right in their hand. I don't know what their main defensive coordinator's name is, 
But he's got Randy Shannon sitting there next to him, too, who's coached defense for 30, 40 years, whatever it is at this point. Um, they're going to make an adjustment at halftime yeah. to take that away in the second half, most likely. Okay, well, so I saw, I saw the safety coming down in the box. Yes. Uh, kind of kind of like Clemson. Um, and we were still trying to run the ball. Uh, we, we, we broke, I think, two long runs because the safety took the wrong angle uh, right. when he came down. We were able to break it outside and get it down to, I think, inside the five-yard line on one of those long runs. But at the same time, you got to make them pay for bringing that safety down there. So you got to be able to throw the ball out, outside and make some plays to get them to go back and even that thing up a little bit. And have a play-action game ready to go. And, and, and these are the little things that I see that are falling through the wayside this season, um, you know, really in every game. I mean, and it, the thing that's scary about it is they've made so much progress as a program. Mm -hmm. Like, they, like it's not crazy that they could be undefeated right now. I mean, if, I mean as, as, as crazy mm -hmm. as this, look at the games they've lost. I mean, North Carolina, they had a bad third quarter. Oh, and that they was, were, but they were winning in that game. Yes, they were. Yeah, but they, they had a bad – they had a yeah. bad third quarter, LT, because – the and, and Lance Gidry, God bless him, he's had a great year. His one blip the entire year was at North Carolina. He was not ready for that fast, turbocharged, uh, up-tempo offense. And Correct. they couldn't get their signals in. They couldn't get lined up. And right. it's they couldn't get players on the field, Gary, because they didn't – they were just going and going and going. Right. Well, that's what I'm getting at, yeah. And, and I mean, you know, that – so, I mean, that screwed up the third quarter of that game. They yeah. lose to North Carolina. Um, NC State, the fourth and one to go up, to go take the lead in the fourth quarter um, was a very conservative call. Same play, they, you know, and, and they just didn't get it done. Um, NC State, um, let's see, FSU, we've already talked about. that. that that's loss number three. And and what am I leaving out? I'm leaving out one of the losses. Georgia Tech. Oh, Georgia Tech, the knee. The knee, right. So, so LT, what I'm getting at is this team and this program, all this progress that they've made, they could be undefeated right now if all these things were just a little bit more tightened up. But they're all on the offense, Gary, based on what we're talking about here. It's all but one thing. The yes. talent level's better, the defense is better, but the offense is stuck. With, with better players, no less, and a great offensive line. So A defense that's playing without its two best defensive ends, by the way. Right. Well, I can tell you this, you know, they they definitely need to continue to I mean, it's it's getting late in the ball game. You got two games in the bowl game, but you still have to somehow find those leaders because you think about this team, um if I'm not mistaken, a lot of these guys can come back. And so with that being said, um, you know, it, it shouldn't even be some some of these guys shouldn't even be thinking about the next level. They should be thinking about uh, on the offense. Or yes. I think Ratson leaves, but everybody else could and should come back. Yes. Uh, well, then the two guys on the offensive line are gone too. But we're talking yeah. about skill people. Is, is is Restrepo a senior? He's coming back. He's coming back. I mean, yeah, he'll be back. He'll be back. Trying, trying to find out if you know what the quarterback situation is. Whether we're going to go out and and uh, get another quarterback or. If the quarterback's going to stay, you know, there's all kind of – but O-line, if we can keep them intact, that's a positive. Um, obviously, we, something needs to happen with the tight ends. We, we know that. Um, the receivers, I think we'll be good. All those guys uh, are here. Um, running back, we should be fine. As long as everybody's happy, um, it's just the quarterback. You make sure and you have a, you have an elite running back coming in and recruiting. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that sticks for the next month. And Kevin right. Riley, hey, Kevin Riley from Alabama. I want to see, see Citizen play. It's been two well. Years. Well, Citizen, we'll see. He's got to make it back from that injury. But uh oh, we lost Lamar for a moment. Um, but um, hopefully he makes it back because because uh, uh, Gino's here, ready to go. But uh, Gino, uh, hang in there, man. We're waiting for Lamar to resurface. He should be back in a minute. <laughs> um, I think he did it on purpose because Gino's coming up. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but no, like you know, so you know, you talk about the quarterback. 
and they do have to figure all that out here in the next few weeks because if Tyler's coming back, not coming back is a huge thing. And and then even if Tyler is coming back, do you still go in the portal and get somebody to compete with Tyler? And I say, uh, I say yes. I, I don't think you have a choice. Right. And Emery compete with him too because he'll – Well, yeah, of course, Emery, Emery, Emery's definitely going to be in the mix. Yeah, he'll oh, be there. Right. Uh, but I'm not – you know, he still has development <laughs> You know he's he's in the very beginning stages right. of, of of his development. Yeah, but he showed so, guts. He showed oh, guts. One hundred percent. He's a great, he's a great kid. kid. Guts. Great That's kid. Great. The other kids love him. They will play yeah. for him. Uh, you know he, he he's going to have a very good career at, at Miami. I just don't know that you're ready to put the whole program's hands on his shoulders. Uh, at the start of next season, like no, you know, that's you have to go out to the portal and get the best guy you can get. That's all you got to go. Yeah, you probably got to go that route, like what Oregon did, and they went and got Bo Nix from Auburn, right. and it's it's taken them to a whole nother level as a, as 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 a football team. Uh, so uh, it, they have a lot of these things to figure out here um, in in the next couple weeks, really, because uh, the portal opens December fourth. And um, I mean, you're reading your message board, Gary. Oh, here he is. You keeping you keeping Gino waiting, Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I couldn't bring Gino on without you being here. <laughs> it's true. That's true. I'm yeah. back. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna worry about next year's quarterback late, later in the show. But um, right now we're gonna bring uh, Gino Toretta in, and um, very very exciting time in 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 his life. Uh, with his jersey being retired on Saturday. Uh, Gino, welcome back to the Lamar Thomas show. Um, we're all just so thrilled for you. And um, I, I know Lamar's got a million things he wants to ask you and say, but but I, I just, while I'm introducing you, my big biggest question that we discussed a minute ago was what means more? The Heisman Trophy that you look at in your living room every day or getting your jersey retired on Saturday? Uh, I think they're I think they're both pretty good. Hopefully this audio is working all right. I can't. I, I, I can't hear you. I hear it through my thing. But uh, I, I mean, obviously, it's uh, it's a tremendous honor. Uh, brings back a lot, a lot of obviously great memories. You know, Lamar and I came in as uh, let's see, young seventeen-year-old kids, and uh, we turned into adults, or or we turned into a majority age. I'm not, I'm not sure if Lamar's an adult yet, but. Uh, um, no, it's just, it, you know, it's just. He knows you, LT. It, it was, uh, <laughs> you know, obviously a lot of great memories. I mean, from from the scout team to uh, getting thrown in as as a starter, as a redshirt freshman. And then Lamar was obviously played a lot more than me uh, besides those four games. But, uh, yeah, all of all of those times, winning a couple of championships, you know, I mean, it's just, just obviously a lot, of, a lot of great memories. A lot of great memories. You know, Gino, uh, you know, you bring up, you getting one of those early starts and you know we just had where a freshman true freshman got a start uh, up there in Tallahassee uh, I, I think back to that game I don't remember us and correct me if I'm wrong did they change anything did they say oh you can't do this or you can't do that or did they say okay man go get this win well, we threw the ball in the first play, and I promptly threw a pick. So, no, they didn't change anything of the game plan. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I hey, I had to throw it to a, a Hall of Famer. I gave I gave Leroy Butler his start, you know. So, uh, but yeah, we we started off slinging it, and um, you know, it was one of those things. I, I don't think we ever changed the game plan on on who played. I think we changed the game plan based on. Okay, this is where we see our best matchups, and I think mm -hmm. um, you know th those those games, you know, were just brutal. I mean, Mickey Andrews was play through the whistle, and uh, they played through the whistle, and you know, Ooh. our guys. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but probably we'd have had six or seven guys on both teams disqualified every every time we played, just from the from the level of hitting that that happened. Mm -hmm. um, but no change in the game plan. I, I think. Uh, you know, the one, the one thing we, uh, we did that was promptly scrapped. I don't, I don't know if you remember this, but up there, we, we had, we had the speed option in mm. when coach Adrian Erickson Knight. got to Miami mm. and, you know, I, obviously I'm like, yeah, I can run the speed option. We can do that, you know, <laughs> and we called it 
inside the five going in. And I literally, I thought I was like Jamel Holloway. I took the snap, <laughs> took like one step back and turned to my right. And I don't know who it was, Footman or one of them big old D tackles. They had blown up the guard. Dude's in my lap. And, and Erickson, I remember when he, because it was like after a timeout, and he goes, right. okay, if you get in any trouble, just toss it to Alex. So toss it to AJ. And Alex Johnson was like fastest guy on the team. I'm like, all right, man, this dude's in my lap. I tossed it to AJ. Four dudes were hit his lap. He had no chance. I mean, it was like just – it was, and, and I can say that uh, uh, that that play was never called again uh, while we were there. It might have been called one for Ryan Collins a few times, but it was never called again for us. <laughs> yeah, Dino and Option didn't go together. Hey, Only positive was- yards rushing, baby. We get in third and long. You know, I got a couple of those babies. <laughs> hey, hey, Dino. You know, I'm I'm sitting here looking at this list of some of your most memorable starts, okay? And where'd this list come from? From you? Uh, no, well, you know, well, if they came from me, you know, we, it, it, would, be a little different, it, it would be memorable starts where Lamar was taken care of. Was touching the ball a lot. Uh, it says here, it starts off with October 14, 1989, Miami versus San Jose State. What do you remember from that game? Well, I will say this. I, I would go the start before. So let's let's go the start before. Because right. Erickson got hurt at Michigan State, so I came in, you know, I think three quarters of that game, played that game. Yes. My first start, which I'm a little shocked that UM didn't say, here, here's the most, most memorable or one of is the first one. We played Cincinnati. Oh, yeah. And I was 13 to 16, three touchdowns, and we were up 42 to nothing at half. And at that point in time, I still remember Coach Erickson at halftime was like, all right, we're going to put Forte in because we need we need him to get some experience as the backup. And I'm like, all right. So I thought I had a pretty good day. Through Actually, I was 14 to 16. Just one went to the other team um, <laughs> with three three tuds in, in, in a half, and, and that was pretty good. And then uh, the, uh, the San Jose State game, you know, I can remember I, I was playing against a kid – and I don't know if you remember, Kel Liebengood, his dad was like on the news in San Francisco, you know, one of the top sports casters. And I played with him in a high school all-star game, like our county games. Mm. And I remember as we're preparing, I'm like, man, this dude's starting at linebacker? I thought he was like a DB wideout when we were in high school. I'm like, this, this isn't going to be good for them. And all I remember is I think we ran 82 plays. They blitzed 78 of them. Yes, they did. Double Eagle Bear. And they, it was the hardest hit I've ever been hit in my life in that game. I got smoked throwing the ball away. Um, and I just remember coming 49. up the line. What's that? 32 of 49. 32 of 40. Well, I mean, we threw it because, heck, you know, you know, Lamar, just freaking check it. If it, if it, you know, as long as it's going to work, just check it. If they're going to freaking give you the hitch. So, I mean, I, I ought to, but you know, you know what our game plan was. If you're going to blitz, you're going to put pressure. Like, I, I, I mean, even I see it now and I'm broadcasting the game, I'm like, throw it. They got man coverage. I mean, what your guys on the outside, that's what they want. Just throw it. You know, why, why try to run into a brick wall of uh, too many guys, too many guys coming? So I just remember Audible and a bunch. I remember Lou Cristobal wanting to kill me because um, <laughs> I, called one, I called one of those plays on first sound going into the open end of the OB. And I came up and, you know, we thought they weren't going to blitz. Called on first sound. I was like inside zone, like a run play. And I'm like, all right, they're blitzing. We're not going to – we're not running – or it's probably draw if, if they were blitzing. So I'm like, I start all of a So before I start, I go, easy, easy. Lou jumps off sides. Man, I literally thought I was like, man, this guy's going to – my own teammate's going to hurt me in the huddle. I mean, like Bobby Garcia and Sully had to step in and uh, they're like, hey, hey, Lou, relax, man. The kids are freshmen. So um, I threw you your, th- I threw your, your first, first TD out, out, out on the right yes, side. Did. I saw I saw 6'3". Six, three, I saw 6'3 against 5'8", and I didn't care how high he can jump. I knew how high you could. So I was just – I was, uh, as Chris T said, throw, throw it up. Hey, hey, Gino! Don't, don't, don't take from me now. The guy was six one. So okay. He was six one. 
And I put well, my knee on you had says, you had an advantage, and we yes. had put in too much too much time throwing fade routes on the scout team. So I was right. uh, I was audible and, and, and getting you the rock. That was my first touchdown. I appreciate that. September twelfth, nineteen ninety one, number two, Miami against Houston. Uh that was the yes. one of the loudest games ever in the Orange Bowl. Yep, that was. Uh, I think Houston came in beating somebody like seventy to twelve, and they were talking all kinds of smack. I remember, uh, obviously, Klingler was Klingler was one of the front runners for the Heisman. He won the September Heisman Award back then, <laughs> and uh, I, I remember their coach. Remember their coach, that crackpot Jenkins. He had a megaphone yes. on the sidelines yeah. trying to yell the plays in. And the fans figured it out. I mean, it was like de- it was deafening when defense was out there. I mean, I, you couldn't hear yourself think. Um, here, here's what I remember: I threw four touchdowns. I think I was 19 mm-hmm. of 35. And the only reason I remember 19 of 35, Lamar, is mm-hmm. after the game in the tunnel. My mom says, "You know, you weren't 50 percent completions <laughs> in the second half." So huh. apparently I didn't have a good enough second half for right. her. You know, the, I threw the four, four touchdowns in the first half. Yes, you did. <laughs> Kevin Williams got two, and I got two. Yeah, yeah that, that was, was – uh, I think that was the hitch and go. They had a sorry DB out there trying yeah. to guard you. I was like, yeah, we'll hitch and go by him. That's right, and I got it. <laughs> uh, October 12th, 1991, number two, Miami versus number nine, Penn State. Uh, at home, I remember home. it being just brutally hot. Yeah, I remember that their guys were sitting on their helmets into the first quarter. Uh, I think Dub Dub returned a punt like eighty. Mm-hmm. I think High C had like an eighty yard t- TD. Yep. Um, but they had a chance to beat us, and I remember like Saka scrambling, and then who did he throw it to? I think he threw it to Casey or, or Ryan at the end of the game, yeah, and Darryl it was Williams, Darryl Williams. or Daryl, Daryl. So he caught it and got on the line and ran out of bounds, which we, we've seen with that line thing has come back to hurt us for some yes. reason. I don't know yes. why, but um, and the Penn State guys to this day say that was a safety. So who knows? They lost. Go home, OJ yes. McDuffie. I remember OJ. I remember that brutally hot though. Brutally hot, yeah. one of the hardest hitting games. And that was uh and I don't know if you remember this, Lamar. That was and I always talked when D'Onofrio was here, is he was he was their best player on defense. Mm-hmm. And he had literally one arm strapped down because he had a bad shoulder. Yes. And he still had about fifteen tackles on us. I'm like, dude, yeah. I don't know how you played, but you play with one arm and still were just just a beast. Yeah, he still sucked, though. All right. Um, Come on now. October 26, 1991, number two, Miami, 36, Arizona, nine. Uh, I remember Lamar, um, that was a late game. I remember being very tired because it was like a, a, a seven, it was a 7.30 local kick, so it was 10.30 our time kick. At halftime, I remember wanting to go to sleep because it was about one in the morning our time because of TV. <laughs> you threw fifty I, passes that game, buddy. I remember. I remember you deciding the day before that you were going to try to score a touchdown with not without going into the end zone. So I got smoked on some blitz, and I'm laying on the ground. And apparently, you ran and stopped and yes. put the ball in the end zone. Yes. Uh, which caused some consternation, but they but they yes. still gave you the touchdown. Yes. And I can remember we ran uh, we ran black X to Patton, yes. and we ran ninety four X to Coleman because um, yes. they kept blitzing off the edge. They they were like, we don't care if your tight end's blocking, we're just gonna blitz. We ain't no guarding blitz. him, and we just dinked a couple behind him. But yeah, that was a lot of passes. But that was uh, that was also well the next year when we barely beat him eight seven. I still remember uh, Barrow saying, man, the quarterback played middle linebacker last year. (laughs) So that was, uh, yeah, that was, that was the start of the desert swarm defense, which uh, had Brewski, Partons, and a bunch of, bunch of (laughs) some NFL hall of favors on it. All right. We got no, November 16th, 1991. Number two, 17, number one, 
Florida State, 16. Uh, I remember get smoked, out of bounds, <laughs> league, yeah. scrambling, oh, that uh, That's right. jacking, up, jacking up my ankle, uh, fourth and six to high didn't C. They call a per- didn't they call a personal foul on that? Did we get a – they oh, no. oh, no. No, they didn't call personal foul. Come on. They didn't call personal fouls back then. I, <laughs> fourth and six to high C when your boy yeah. T Buck was lined up five yards in the end zone. We were fourth and yeah. six on the nine. I was like, wow, he, why is that guy so afraid, far he, deep in the end he zone? He was afraid of the fade. He, I, I know he fade. was, but I mean, you can't run a fade out, out the back of the end zone. So he was just gave us too much room. We thank um, I remember getting uh, s- s- my shoe spat because of my ankle. And Andy Clary, our trainer, spat both my shoes, covered up the Nike swoosh, and I remember getting called into Coach Erickson's office the next morning and getting yelled at. He goes, you spat your shoes? I said, yeah, they spat them after I jacked my ankle up. And, there, and so apparently he was getting an earful from Nike for covering up the uh, the swoosh. What a, yeah. what a, oh, I, I remember, uh, I don't know if you remember this, you, 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 uh, you guys were, were in your own world sometimes. Um, I remember calling timeout because they were going to blitz, and it was before where to kick the field goal to go up 19-16 or, or 17-16. Well, we only had and 10 by the way, the by the way, we only had 10 players on the goal. field, and he still kicked a field, good field goal. It was good. Wow. Um, we called timeout because they were blitzing, and I didn't have enough time to audible. After all the timeout, I go back to the line of scrimmage. They come down in the blitz late. And again, I didn't have enough time to audible, and I called timeout. So we've now called two timeouts, run zero plays. And Coach E, I've never seen him so hot, boy. He was screaming at me in the middle of the field. I screamed back. I can't tell you exactly what I said, but I'm fairly certain I used some choice words. How many times did he say I pointed at the 25-second clock, and I said there's two seconds, and I, I couldn't audible. And then, and then, uh, you know, by the time I got to the side, freaking good job. And they pat me on the head with his ring. I was like, dude, come on, take it easy, man. That hurts when you're slapping me on the head with that big old ring. Freaking. All right. So we got the Horace Copeland field goal to Larry Jones scoring the one yard. That was a big win for us. November 30th, 1991, Miami 39, San Diego State 12. Uh, I threw for a lot of yards. I think. I think yes, that was you broke that was single game passing record, four hundred eighty five yards. I, that might have been the best ever in the Orange Bowl. No, shoot the uh, probably Marino or uh, Fouts. I think they for, threw for five hundred. I think when they were having that Thanksgiving battle. But uh, no, that was the same deal. I mean, we had better better players. They tried to blitz and hit me, knock me out of the game, and we we threw the heck out of it all around the lot. I think by then, I think. Mac was uh, greedy. Was hurt by then, yeah. So we were we were pretty much chucking it all the time. We racked up uh, a season high five hundred and seventy nine total yards. So we had what eight ninety yards of rushing. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right, my friend. <laughs> what'd you? Jay, hey, what'd you tell me early? You ain't gonna win the Heisman handing it off. <laughs> you ain't gonna win the Heisman handing that bitch off, dog. <laughs> January 1st, 1992, number one Miami versus number 11 Nebraska. Worst field conditions of, of the Orange Bowl in our career. That field was painted green, and my, my jersey still has paint marks all over all over the back of it. I remember getting the wind knocked out of me, coming out for a few plays, and Frank coming in for a few plays. Um, that was one game I, I still remember preparing for it thinking they can't play this defense on us and we're watching the film and I'm like you know uh, what's his name the the AD now Trevor Alberts defensive end he was a first round pick and they would line him up on the first slot receiver and I'm like okay wait a sec Kevin Williams runs a 428 this guy could be he could be 4 or 5 and legit as a DN but he ain't going to cover it K Dub I just I just remember like kind of shaking my head all game going or at least prepared, I'm like, they got to do something different because they're going to get just absolutely crushed, and they got absolutely crushed. <laughs> That's what happened to them. Uh, by the way, Kevin Williams scored eight-yard touchdown pass early in the game. Um, it says we ran a balanced offensive attack. We ran 85 plays and amassed 439 yards. Yeah, that, was, that was a lot of handing off. Big Larry. Big Larry came in. And, and Marucci. 
your boy from Gainesville. And Marucci got a couple carries. Did he? All right. Wow, yeah. look at that. Yeah, yeah, he did. September the 5th, 1992. Number one, Miami versus number 23, Iowa. First game of the year. Uh, I remember Hurricane Andrew yeah. wiping out Homestead and a lot of Miami. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember it was complete disarray as, as uh, we were – before we prepared, I remember calling, let's see, how did my calls go? Because I live down in the grove near the water, and I remember uh, calling Clary first and saying, hey, uh, what are we doing for this storm? Well, actually, the first thing, Bernadette was was in school, and, and she said, what are you guys doing for the hurricane? And I was like, what are you talking about? You know, you're in the middle of two days. Right. You never turn on TV. And I remember turning on the TV, and that Brian Norcross was like, well, winds are could go to 200 plus and people will <laughs> die in South Florida. And that, I remember hearing that and I was like, all right, I'm going to call a trainer. And he goes, well, we got to just see if it's just a little high winds first. And I, I went off. I was like, dude, I go, I'm on the water down in the Grove. I go, they, they said a 15 foot seawall and 200 mile an hour. People are going to die. I'm not staying here. <laughs> and then I called coach Arnold. And he, and he was like his advice. Well, I guess we just got to batten down the hatches. <laughs> and then remember we, we showed up in the morning for a Saturday scrimmage and, and they made like everybody wanted to get out of town and coach Erickson at that point, he said, okay, see you Tuesday. And it was like a mad rush out of the locker room. You know, and then I went north. Duskowski lived up up in Palm Beach. We we were like, okay, go north because it's supposed to hit south. And uh, but that first game, uh, you know, that's that record still stands. That's the most passing yards in uh, Nile Kinnick Stadium, four thirty three. But I remember uh, what what's another funny story? Oh, Simonette, your boy Simonette started at guard, <laughs> and we flipped sides, and we were getting killed in the middle. And we come off the hut, come out the, the game, and I'm like, "What the?" I mean, I'm screaming at the whole line, you know what I mean? I'm like, it, it wasn't. I was like, "Dude, we're, our national championship hopes are going to be gone in week one." And and Simonette was like, "Well, I can't hear," and I'm like, "Well, I can't either." Yeah, it's really loud. He goes, "No, I'm deaf in my left ear," <laughs> and I'm like, "And you're lining up at right guard." I go, how are we flipping guards if you don't, you know? So I, I, I do remember that. I remember, uh, 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 what's his name? Tom Arnold paying some guy a couple hundred bucks to, st to, uh, to uh, streak the field, the, oh. the actor, because uh -huh. the guy was annoying him, but he wanted, so he paid him a couple hundred bucks to streak the field so he could get rid of him. Still and then, uh, yeah, I remember the pink locker room in, yep. uh, in Iowa. <laughs> do, do you remember your, 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 um, your number one receiver is showing up the night before the game. Uh, Remember, I think all, you got. I think you got. Story, I think you got. I think you got held out by police escort a couple by a couple well, of those first ones, didn't you? All, all these stories that you're telling about the hurricane, I I was gone. I wasn't with the team. Remember, so I was. So this is the first I'm hearing this because I wasn't with the team. I didn't show up and get with the team until the night before. But they wouldn't let you play, right? You couldn't play. Yeah. They no, I played. Uh, did you? Yeah, okay. I played. All right. All right. I almost I almost died in warm ups because I lied right. to Coach Harrison and told him I was in shape. He said, You've been working, you've been freaking working out. I go, Yeah, yeah, coach, I'm good. I got there in warm ups. I was like, shit, I'm tired. You should, and you remember should, the grass you was hot. You should have you should have known pre tar diversion, you do that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. October third, nineteen ninety two, number two Miami against number three, Florida State. Uh, opening right kick, there. Van over, go, Van over going ninety seven. Yeah, and I remember thinking, God dog, I said we, it, it's hard enough as it is when we just spotted them seven. <laughs> um, I remember getting God, I remember getting smoked in that game. Pretty, I remember getting hit pretty, pretty darn hard. I remember scrambling for a thirteen yarder up the middle or something like that, and. uh we couldn't run the ball so bad. I, I, I remember going back and watching this at the end of the game. We got the ball back with like under two minutes to go, and we were mm -hmm. up by three at damn near midfield, and we threw three passes three in a row. In a like row. that's yeah. how bad we were running the ball. It was like we're throwing it. We don't even we, we don't it. even care. We um, threw it. 
did. Yeah, I, I, and then Michael, Michael hitting the hell out of Van Over. I think oh, it was yeah. Van Over in the in the chin on the on the middle screen, and then obviously the the wide right two, which would have been just to tie us. But uh, yeah, yep. heat, heat, humidity. Or that was also an Orange Bowl game where they ran out of water yeah. right at halftime. I, I do I do know that because I remember seeing my family after they were all beat red, dying <laughs> of thirst um, because there was no water in the stadium. That was the touchdown pass that you threw that you never saw. So which one? Oh, oh, well, the, yeah. I remember. I, you know what? I, I, there's two passes I remember. I remember the touchdown to Coleman, which mm-hmm. we ran a fake reverse pass yeah. we had never yeah. run. And Coleman was wide open. It was one of wide those open. things where I turned run on the bootleg, and I'm like, "Oh man!" It was like you know where you see a quarterback miss it because it's so wide open. So wide open. Mm-hmm. I remember that one. And then obviously you came in, and if you go back and watch that, it shouldn't have been allowed. No, we broke the we huddle with guys, twelve we guys. Too many guys on the field. Yes. Yeah. This was again. That was after a timeout. <laughs> like somebody came in as we're breaking the huddle. I'm like, "Get the hell out of here." <laughs> <laughs> and then Daniel you to you the you field. you told somebody, I'm not the Z. I'm over here at tailback because you knew there could be one on one over on the right. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, well Lamar's out there. I'm like, I know I'm not going to have any time. They're bringing the house, and I remember throwing it, and I remember just getting lit up, kind of sideways, have not being able to breathe, and it was the worst feeling in the world. And I could hear the crowd, so I knew you caught it, and and. uh that was that was it. October 17, 1992, number one Miami against TCU. Uh that one, this is what I remember. Safeties that lined up eight yards from the ball, thinking, uh-huh. God, why are they doing this to themselves? And we <laughs> ran the hell out of bang eights and post routes. And I think I threw threw you one that might have been higher than a Paul Snyder punt. Because I got just absolutely drilled in the chest, and I think you ran down. You tried to fair catch it, but you can't fair catch a, a pass play. So, uh, but uh, I think you had a pretty good day too. I think all the wideouts had pretty good days yeah. on that day. Yeah, that was that was that was a. We we appreciate TCU for coming down. Um, October twenty fourth, nineteen ninety two, number one Miami against Virginia Tech. I remember that was so. Great story about that game. They were not very good. Yep. And Frank Beamer, I've talked to him after that, and he said, we were 3-8, and eight, and they probably should have fired me. He goes, but they had some faith in me, kept me, and then the guy kept winning, and it turns out in the Hall of Fame coach and takes them to the Orange Bowl and, and all sorts of bowl games and that. Um, I remember that was one of the few games where I had some time to throw. And I remember one where I was just kind of standing there, kind of sliding, 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 and you were out on the right and then the whole defense is going to the left, and you kind of slid back behind them. You just, you just like standing there. We were like playing pitch and catch. And then I think we were p- politicking Erickson to pull us all out at halftime. Yes. And we he up, said um, – We were up 33 points. Uh, and he we said – and he, he was like, no, no, no. He go, And he made us a deal. If you score the first drive, I'll take you guys out. We scored – and yeah. I think that was the only time I, were, I was ever on an active sidelines. I took my shoulder pads off, put my jersey back on. We, we were up thirty-one to three at halftime. I also, I also, you remember Friday before that game? No, what happened Friday in the stadium? So our defense is doing the dance around, and we're just kind of hanging out on the bench. And Virginia Tech's in their tunnel and wanted to come out oh. and do their walkthrough. Okay. And the guys had circled up to call out guys to dance. And then they noticed the other team was sitting there watching. And then it got nasty, vulgar, and, uh, yeah, they wanted to fight us and, uh, you know, all those fun things. <laughs> that, fight, that fight went away. It was, it was gone because it was 31-3 to three at halftime. At, at 58 minutes to go in the game, it, it left them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, October 31st, 1992, Miami versus West Virginia. Uh, I remember having 13 or 14 in a row, and yeah. High C dropped a bomb like right through his bread basket. And I didn't know I'd thrown that many completions in a row. But that was that was one where I was on. Their game plan was to try to pressure, and we 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 blitzed, and and we had 
we we had a good day. The skill positions had a damn good day. That that Loretta night. spread the ball around the eight receivers, connecting eight times with Coleman Bell, throwing two scoring strikes to you know who. Um, <laughs> and, and, and then that you know who gave you the Heisman pose. <sighs> Yeah, that was that was terrible. You look like you look like uh, Mr. Burns on on The Simpsons. Like, <laughs> you, you know, you look, you look like you you weighed about 155 pounds. Then at the end of the year, you pull up the highs and pose. I'm like, if you're gonna do it, do it. Don't do it don't right. be all I, crouching hey man, down listen, like you listen. like you're you know like you had osteoporosis and stuff. <laughs> hey, hey, bro, I I didn't even know I was gonna do it. I just felt it. It was emotional. It was, it was like it was a hit and go. Perfect play. We got a new cornerback in there, freshman Aaron Beasley, who went on to play in the NFL for a long time, um, tore his ass up. So I felt, oh, man, I got that connection. So let me give my guy the Heisman. It was a terrible Heisman, by the way. But awful, anyway, I'm glad awful. he won. Didn't uh, High C do a flip that game or no? No, that was the Temple game. Oh, okay. So no, the last game, November 28, 1992, Miami, Miami, number one Miami over San Diego State. Uh, that Miami. was basically Marshall Falk and me for the Heisman, and uh, and Marshall was hurt, did not play against our defense. Um, I remember that they were cheap shotting us the entire yeah. game. We were beating the hell out of them, mm -hmm. and they had we had a major brawl. Mm -hmm. And the I remember well before the brawl, I remember we were inside the five. And their Aztec, the mascot, be standing at the at the goalpost, like going into the ground, mm -hmm. MFing me in the middle of the field, and I'm like, "This can't be! I mean, this can't be legal!" The the the, the mascot's like screaming at the other team, and I'm like, "All right, whatever." And then when 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 the brawl started, I remember sitting on the bench, and all you guys are like, "You going over there?" I'm like, no, what, no. "What am I going to do in a fight?" I'm like, "You know, we got pads on. It's stupid to get in a fight." And I remember seeing Dewey run run the mascot up in the second yeah. deck of Jack Murphy, wanting to start his WWE wrestling career. And uh, and I remember Coach Erickson after that. And you got you you still are mad at me for this day because I didn't go back in. He he said, "Do you want to go back in?" I said, "Hell no! They're taking cheap shots. We're up by four touchdowns. I'm done. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to go back in." And I you needed, needed one, like one or two catches catch. to set a record. I one catch to break the school record, <laughs> Michael Irvin's record. And let, but, but let me just read it. What it says: The Canes ventured west, rolled past San Diego State, sixty-three to seventeen, to complete the second consecutive undefeated regular season campaign. Toretta threw for three hundred and ten yards and one touchdown. A 24-yarder to Lamar Thomas. Miami racked up a season-high 581 yards, the third-best total in school history, also tied a school record for 35 points in the third quarter. How did we have 310 if we had almost 600 yards of offense? Could we run the ball? I, I don't know. Did, Frank, did Costa have like 250 throwing? I don't know, but let's get back wow. to that. So <laughs> one catch. I needed one catch to break the record. And I look. Hey, I'm sorry, but I didn't know that. You know, when you when Prince, you're going for a record, I listen. I already had all the records, so I, I it didn't matter if I came out or not. I'd broken all the records. So if you needed I, a record, you wanted me to throw it. You should have said, "Come out there." I look. I look out there. I look back there. It's Frank Costa. I'm like, oh crap. <laughs> and his only job is to throw me a hitch, and I almost tore my knee up catching that hitch. But I, I got the record. No thanks to Gino, but it's a well, call. You could have told me to go out there. I would have went now, out there. Just for remember, just for you, I would have went out there. Not hey, for anybody re else, but just remember, for you, I would have went out there. Remember, you know, you pulled out of there because there were death threats on Coach Erickson. So everybody was trying to stay the hell away from Coach Erickson, remember? <laughs> I do remember that. There was death threats, yes. There was death threats on him, yes. And uh, when, obviously when he, the San Diego State fans didn't like me because of uh, – Yes, <laughs> because so, Marshall and and I were the leaders for the Heisman. And and just so you know, when he congratulated me, I gave him the quickest hug and and run off I'd ever done because I was not <laughs> getting shot. <laughs> but those so those are some of the great games in Mr. Toretta's uh, life. Obviously, um, the Florida State game is not mentioned. The the your first start, the Michigan State, uh, you stepping in. 
um, and doing a tremendous job. Obviously, Florida State, you you learned on the run. I mean, you learned, hey, it's a, it's a big rivalry game. We got through it. We still won a national championship. And obviously, those games. Against I, I don't know. If, I don't know if it's foreshadowing, but I was 19. I lost, and I also shattered my humerus later in the uh, in the spring. So maybe that'll bode well for Emory. Maybe it'll come back and 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 win a oh. couple against them and a couple of titles and uh, gets his arm right. So there, there you go. Because we were literally <laughs> four and one against them. You know, we lost to one, but you know, it, it's it's like that that old shirt said. F the F the game, we got the ring. So you know it is it is what it is. Uh, but Gino, man, we're we're I'm definitely looking forward to uh, to Saturday. Well, actually Friday night, and then Saturday. Yeah, well, you're you're worried about my speech. What about your speech? Friday, you you got at least you know you got to say a few words about your boy, oh, don't you? Hey, hey man, I, I got this. Are you already this is what I do. Bernadette, Bernadette wants you to tell the story about me convincing you to stay at Miami when Coach E came in with his tweed jacket. That's what she. That's what she <laughs> wants you to. She's like that. That I love that story. So. That, that was a, that was a big moment. That was a huge moment, <laughs> and I will I will definitely tell that story tomorrow and maybe Saturday morning. Uh, even though I'm not drinking, I don't drink, but some people will have some mimosas, and we will be out there tailgating, and we will be enjoying the fact that our quarterback. My quarterback gets his jersey retired. This is a great honor, man. I'm 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 stoked. I'm I'm proud. I'm happy. Um, I, I wish I wish I wish we could play, but I know we can't. But uh, I just want to say congratulations to you, Thank man. You. you deserve it. Um, I wish it, I wish it was an orange bowl. And I promise well, you, I think we got four or five plays left in us. That's about <laughs> it, though. Four or five and. I mean, hey, you, hey, you, Lamar, you, what what do you think of these kids? They're wearing shorts now to play. This they look like you guys. They look like you guys practicing a green tree with the with the thigh pads in and your your pants cut up like eight eight eight, eight inches above the knee. I'm like, man, somebody's gonna get whacked in the in the top of the knee, and it's not gonna feel good. But how um, how many times did the referees tell me pull your pants down, Thomas? Pull your pants, pull your pants down, down. down. Pull your pants down. Thomas. You got you got a hip. What was what was the thing? You got a hip, hip tail tail pad in. You got a tail yeah. pad in. Put that in his knee pad. So. <laughs> Well, man, hey, Gino, we, uh, Gino, can I ask you a question? It's been coming up the last couple of weeks. It's something I think the fans want. What are your thoughts on it? Everybody's screaming, we need a dual threat quarterback. Your opinions on what we have, which is usually a pocket guy, or a dual threat quarterback? Well, I mean, to be dual threat and be good at it, I think there's there's obviously advantages to that. I mean, it's, it's harder said than done. Um, you know, I mean, not everybody's – Tua or, or Bryce, you know, young out of Alabama. I think that, uh, you know, Texas, I just did Texas last week. Their quarterback isn't dual threat at all. Yours just sits in the, sits in the pocket and slings it. I, I think it's, it's doing what at least co Jimmy coaching us, Dennis, Dennis coaching us, you're going to put your best 11 on the field and you're going to try to create a game plan around that. And, and obviously the quarterback is a is a big position of, of how you're going to game plan. Um, you know, I think you know. Listen, when Coach Erickson wanted us to go to shotgun, I still went under center, and and even if teams knew that we were going to run the ball, because I would go under center, play action. I'd also go under on running plays because any running back you ask, they want to be running at the line of scrimmage and they want to be running downhill so they downhill. can hit the defense. Mm -hmm. And I, it just kills me. We we Everybody in college football nowadays, they sit in shotgun, take a sideways handoff. That's fine if it's draw, you know, second and long, third and long, or something like that, and you you get the defense off balance. Um, yeah, I think that, you know, listen, when, when I came here, uh, Gary Stevens wanted to sign a good quarterback every single year. He wanted – but with with the transfer portal, with recruiting, with, you know, all this stuff – you know, you didn't. I mean, hell, you didn't really know who was on the roster no. when when we came to school. You no. knew who the starters were, right. but Lamar wasn't. You know, Lamar wasn't compete with Michael. Michael graduated and went in in pro. He, so you know, you're you're not sure. Okay, what's the depth look like now? These kids are like, well, who's there? Exactly. When can yeah. I start? 
Right. You know, I mean, Gary hey, Steves told me not to come to school in Miami. He goes, Hey, you, 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 weren't, come, worried, you weren't worried about Joey Cole? Well, Joey <laughs> came in with us. I just, I, to me, like Gary Stevens told me not to come to the school. He said, don't come here. He goes, if you come here, if Steve Walsh does not turn pro early, I'm red shirting Craig Erickson. You are going to be the backup. And I'm giving Craig two years to start. And I said, I don't really care. I get one year to start and I got a chance to win a championship and get on the cover of Sports Illustrated. I want to go there. Right. But you're not going to you, you, – today, these kids, it's like they invest, you know, very little in programs. It's like a year and they're done. I mean, Saban just came out and he's like, no pro scout has ever asked me how much did this kid play as a freshman. Yeah. You have to learn. Um, you know, Texas is – I just mentioned Texas because they're fresh in my mind broadcasting our game last week. Yours is a stud. Malik is is outstanding. And then they got Arch Manning. You know, and, and Sarkeesian, he mentioned when he had uh, Carson Palmer, uh, Matt Leiner, Matt Castle, all starters in the National Football League. Is that going to happen again where three guys stay at a school? Um, I'd probably be hard-pressed. Uh, but to me is find somebody that, that you love, whether it's a dual threat, pocket guy, whatever, and design the system around the strengths of the other 10 guys. And if it's, you know, the guys up front, obviously you might be run heavy, then play action off of that. And then, you know, you're utilizing your wideouts and obviously, and, you know, taking shots and, and, and things like that. But, uh, you know, I think I kind of misstated my question because a lot of these people are saying you cannot win unless you have a dual quarterback. Oh, that's I disagree. No, I, I, that's what these no, I, no, I, no, I, no, I, do, I, I don't think, no, you can that's win crazy. being a, I mean, that's you know, nice. listen, I, would I consider Caleb Williams, the Heisman winner from last year, a dual threat? He is a great athlete and he can run. Right. He's not an RPO guy. He's not Lamar Jackson. He's right. not running the option and, and, you know, he may run it, sprinkle it in a little bit, but they're not leaning on him being that runner you know, 50% of the time, he's still a thrower first and drop him back and things like that. I, I think to me, it's more critical of you, you, you design what you're doing offensively to the strengths of your 11 guys you're trotting out there on the field. Right. And, but I do think you know, I, that Drake may can make something out of nothing. J Jordan Travis has the ability to make something out of nothing because he can run the ball. But yeah, but I, heck, it. Bruce, I remember going to, I broadcast a Florida State game during COVID one year. I mean, he got booed out of his own stadium, and there was only yeah. about 5,000 people there. And I remember thinking, wow, this kid was so fast. I'm like, he should just be on the field. That's what I thought. I'm like going, I don't care if you're not going to play him at quarterback. Put him at slot receiver. Run him on a, run him on a reverse and, and wide receiver pass. Just do, just do something because he can get on the field. So, you know, that's what I'm saying is you can be successful just – do what your guys, what their strengths are. I mean, obviously Miami's strengths right now, the offensive line is a strength, and you got, to me, you got two pretty good wideouts on the outside. I mean, they're playmakers. And the running and, back. You know, the, the the running back situation seems like the guys have gotten banged up some. Um, you know, this year they had a lot of depth early, and it was like, man, they were just kind of one two and putting all these guys in, and they were they were hurting other teams. You know, and I, and I think that, uh, you know, in the game – Last week, I, I thought that, you know, Emery, I thought, you know, Tyler, you know, Tyler only played a little bit at the end, but, you know, they had a lot of time to throw. I mean, for a Miami-Florida State game, I know yes. I know the, the time. And, and you know, there was there was some accurate accuracy issues um, on some yeah. of those passes. And that, that has nothing to do with being a RPO guy or run-pass guy, a dual-threat guy. That, that just comes from – you know, there's a great saying, make make the routine plays routinely. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, that's very hard to do. And that's that's what Coach Erickson I thought was so great at, where he was just like, if somebody's going to give you a hitch, if somebody's going to give you a slant, somebody's going to give you a quick out, just take it. Just, take just it. do it. And I knew, I knew Lamar. I knew I could I, I knew if if it was third and six, I knew he wouldn't run a hitch at five yards if I audibled. I knew he would go to eight. Right. And I knew he knew to look for the ball over on the left shoulder versus the right shoulder. Or if, if he was running it out, he always made sure he got the, you know, first down catches with the sticks. Those are all the little things that 
you know, it, 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 the quarterback looks good doing it, but it takes the wide receiver right. knowing, hell, I'm not going to run a route short, make the catch and get smoked. Right. And, and it's a third down. So I, you can be successful, you know, being one dimensional. Is it, is it great when you can run like Caleb or Lamar or, or, or Bryce? Heck yeah, it's phenomenal. They can, they can extend the play and all that sort of stuff. But I saw a lot of, I would say extended plays Saturday where there was a lot of time s- sitting in the pocket, you know, yeah. we didn't, you know, for whatever reason it, it, it did play didn't work. Hey Gino, before we let you go, um, just your general thoughts on what you've seen from Tyler Van Dyke this year. It's been shocking to everybody. Well, I, I think, uh, the confidence level, I don't, I don't think is there. Um, I, I think that, that would probably come from, listen, we, we had to learn two offenses. I learned one our freshman year, which, so you figure that's only four months. So did we really know our first offense? I, I, I literally, I couldn't even tell you one of our plays, you know, from, from our first Texas. offense, Texas. Yeah. Te- well, Texas. Yeah. There you go. Which was 88 X. So I, so I, we knew what I knew one play a route concept, but protection, those sorts of things. He's had three different coordinators in the last three years. I think, you know, he's gotten banged up. He went into the season with ligament damage in his index finger on his throwing hand. I think that that has gotten worse. And, you know, I think at times as any athlete, I mean, he's just, it, it's just, he doesn't have the confidence there. And f- for the confidence, the, the question is, how do you get it back? I mean, like I play with Herman Moore. In Detroit, Herman averaged 22 yards a catch in college. Was a first round pick. He got to the pros, and it was like he got brick hands. And they, he's how they brought him back was throwing six yard hitches and just catching the ball and saying, "Okay, if you can get 22 after that, go ahead." And that's how he built this confidence. Mm. So if if I'm calling plays for a quarterback that doesn't lack, it doesn't have the confidence or is looking to gain confidence, you know, I think. One, you're going to rely on the running game. You're going to play action the hell out of teams. I would, I would throw short. I would tell the quarterback, throw short. Take your first read. Throw a flat route. Throw a hitch. Throw, throw, the, throw those types of passes. Screens are our QB's friend because, I mean, I threw an 88-yarder to Wesley Carroll who was in the slot. And nobody covered him. I just stood up, threw him the ball. The ball didn't go one yard downfield, and he ran 88 with it. So those are the kinds of plays that can build – a quarterback's confidence. Um, and I, and I, you're not playing with a tight end either, Gino. Arroyo went down and they're, they're no, really – No, that's why – yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like right. – so you're – like I think now that – like this team – this team is so – I would say very different than what beat A&M because you had the tight end. So now what's their option? Now, now you're going to say a three-wide – Two back look. I don't even think they. I don't even think. I would probably guess they don't even have that formation. They've had two backs before. No, yeah. but with three wides, no tight end. Oh, yeah. So um, it's it's a whole different that. look. It's a whole different protections yeah, for what what's the line doing? Which backs blocking? Which backs blocking a route? You know, there you can only throw so many dodge routes to Restrepo in the slot. Right. You know, I mean, people just clamp. I mean, if you watch them, it's like. You know, people will drop a tackle and they just basically they go to six or seven yards and say, "Okay, this kid's going to go in or out." The D lineman's got that inside, the safety's got the outside, and he's doubled on on every play. Yeah, they have the safety over the top of him now because they've been going to him so much. Now they've taken him away. He hasn't done much in the last two or three games. No, right? yeah, because they because they double him. You can't. Right. You can't. I mean, you, the only way you beat a double is splitting a double. But you know, then you're talking about you know, listen, that's a hard throw up the seam. And if you're a true freshman, you don't want to turn the ball over. You're right. not, you're, you're, that's not, that's not a play. If I'm, if I'm a quarterback, I mean, I, you know, I had enough confidence in myself where I would just tell coach Erickson during a week of preparation, I don't like to play. Mm-hmm. And it, it looked great on film. It looked great, you know, on a blackboard, but in my mind, it just, I, I just, I didn't see it. And I was concerned. I'm like going, if I don't see it and they do this, and I don't see it. It's going to be a pick. So, you know, I, I think it's, you know, he, he's just got to get his confidence back and that, 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 that it will take the other 10 guys around him picking him up. And, you know, yeah. that's, that's, that's how it is. That's, that's why it's the greatest team sport we watch. 
I mean, the quarterback, the quarterback is all the credit, but he, he relies on all 10 of those guys around him to do their job. And, and he, he needs it more now, um, than ever. Yeah. Well, speaking of getting all the credit, you get your jersey retired, baby. <laughs> Ooh, hey. I can I can look up there and say, hey, see the one and the three. The three is for thirty six. The first number. <laughs> well, when we we get old, we can reminisce, or or we, well, we already all are old. So, <laughs> hey, hey brother. Can we buy one in the store at least with a 13 on it? That's okay, right? You know, I, I don't even know. I don't, you know, it's it's crazy. It's like, you know, this. they asked me in the summer, and, I, you know, you would have thought Adidas would try to make some money and, and make a 13, but uh, I, I actually did ask for, is Russell going to make the, the jersey <laughs> they're going to give me since they made our jerseys way back when, but uh, – Hey, no, it's it's hey, uh, that's it's all right. I'll be, be rocking. I'll be rocking the Geno Thomas ninety one shirt. There you all go. Right? There you go. All right, you better better watch out. You bring politics into games. They're gonna they're gonna have a death threat on you. <laughs> it is always a death threat on him. <laughs> I'm good. Hey Geno, appreciate it, man. I'll see you on. I'll see you Friday. Sounds good. See you all right, guys. My all right, Thank you. Thanks for coming. The great Gino Toretto, man. Wow. Uh, what, what what great memories. What great memories. All right, LT, we got uh, AC Tellison on deck, man. He's been waiting patiently. Yeah. Uh, let's knock out some business real quick here. Okay. Um, let's start by taking a look at the new Canesware store. Welcome, Welcome to, to Canesware. New store, new items, same great experience. Family owned and operated since 2010, Canesware has the latest merchandise from the Miami Hurricanes, Miami Dolphins, Florida Panthers, Inner Miami CF, and more. Come visit us at our store in Davie on University Drive, just south of 595, or online at canesware.com. Canesware, the spot Miami fan shop. Canesware, the largest. Oh, we large- <laughs> changed. Uh, the largest selection of Kane's gear that you'll ever find anywhere. Uh, Lamar can change jackets every 30 minutes um, when he's sitting inside Kane's wear. Uh, they have it all. T-shirts, jerseys, polos, hoodies, hats, flags, decals, magnets, sizes for men and women and kids and babies. And if you have a pet, Kane's wear will even dress your pet. And uh, Dolphin season is in full force. <laughs> um, what are you, a runway Dolphin- model? I feel like I feel like I'm in a Luke video. <laughs> Without the girls, of course. Uh, Dolphins gear, Panthers gear, Inter Miami soccer. Uh, soon they'll probably even have Florida Beach Bowl shirts in there at Canesware. I I I feel pretty sure that might happen. Uh, they're at 2655 South University Drive in Davie, right next to La Spada Sub Shop. Um, in the same strip shopping center where they have been for years. So go there and visit them, 2655 South University Drive in Davie, or you can go to canesware.com. They're open 24 hours a day, obviously there. Canesware has the largest selection of Miami Hurricanes gear that you will find anywhere. Um, Tonight's show is also sponsored by the Florida Beach Bowl, which is coming to Drive Pink Stadium here in a few weeks, a new bowl game for historically black colleges. That has been created by a former Kane, A.C. Tellison, who's been coming on the show here momentarily to tell us all about it. Uh, LT, tell us a little more about the Florida Beach Bowl. All right. right. Well, sure. I'll go get the read in. South Florida, are you ready for the highly anticipated Florida Beach Bowl? Scheduled for December 13, 2023 at 730 at Dry Pink Stadium in the city of Fort Lauderdale. This inaugural event features a, a showcase of historically black college and universities or universities, HBCUs, from the SIAC and the CIAA football programs, which we know the teams now. Okay, so here I'll let him tell it. Battling it out on the sun-drenched shores of South Florida, this bowl game is all about uniting and showcasing Broward County as a whole, in addition to the main event. Uh, the Florida Beach Bowl is hosting a golf tournament, which I'll be playing. The 5K run, which I might go down there and walk a little bit. A community concert and various special events, which AC will tell us more about. All designed to engage and uplift our community. For more information, visit www.floridabeachbowl.com or listen to AC Tellison. Come on in. Tell us what's going on. 
<laughs> and tonight's show is also sponsored uh, by Williamson Cadillac, where right. LT goes to get all his phenomenal automobiles that he rides around town in. And it ask usually for Jermaine. ask for Jer- former Kane Jermaine Chambers when you go there uh, to, to buy your car. He'll take care of you, hook you up with the right manager, the right sales guy. Um LT always buys his car in multiples. That always helps. <laughs> <laughs> you, you might you might you, you might get cars that work. Yeah, uh, but but uh, no. And also there's this uh, Williamson Cadillac. They'll they'll, yeah. they'll they'll treat you right and go check them out. And then of course the law firm of Bratson and Faxadomo. And um, man, if you get yourself in trouble, yeah, Lamar, that's the place to go. Oh, it's definitely a place to go. That they've. Uh... Ratson and Fasadomo down in South, down South have done an outstanding job. I usually have that long read, but I'm just going to tell you like this. Here's the deal. If you get in trouble, see that number, that 305 number? That's the number you need because I'm telling you, they're going to represent you to the fullest, 100%. They're all about making sure that you feel good, your family feels good. They're going to get it done. They're going to get it corrected, and it's going to make for a better life. Uh, they've been nominated for awards for all the law, the you know, all the lawyer stuff, as as you would say, uh, the, the 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 fan, the, all the lawyer stuff. They they they're one of the, the top law firms in in South Florida. Um, and if you have a a young kid that's in college, keep this number too because they handle a lot of cases. Uh, if you're in New York and you're watching and you got a kid going to the University of Miami and getting a little trouble. This is a law firm for you. So Ratson and Fasadomo, they do an outstanding job. Take that number down. I can't see it because my eyes are. 305 600 3519. 305 600 3519. All right. What do you mean? And then we got one more LP. You can't see? Come on. I'm glasses, man. And then the last one, obviously. Life Gym, put it up there. CrossFit, Life. Uh, let's see, if you feel a little uneasy about getting back into working out or nervous about CrossFit, Life gives you three free trials. So try it out. Uh, my wife, she goes there. She, she got hooked. She loves it. Every workout is modified, modifiable to your specific abilities. So you don't have to feel a certain way if you can't keep up. Uh, most experienced trainers in there, they do an outstanding job. And guys, I got to tell you this. This is something I found out. Now, I can't go in there, but I'm just get, giving the guys a little something. Eight to ten ratio, women to men. Okay? So you got eight women in there and two dudes. <laughs> You might want to go down and take that. Now, I can't just show up there now. That's, it's definitely, I can't show up. But I'm telling you guys, 8 to 10, women, come on, go try it out. Three free sessions. Give them the address again, Gary. Uh, I athletics. Wait, it, I think we have it. It's, it it'll be coming one, up on the screen here in a one, minute. 12330 <laughs> Southwest 53rd Street, Cooper yeah. City, Florida. There you it's go. It's in Cooper City. And let's tell the truth, Lamar. Like your your wife goes there and, the, and she works so hard, man. She comes home all bruised up and stuff. Yeah, it's crazy. She, yeah, she but she's into that CrossFit. She loves it, man. She 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 really enjoys it. I mean, she was a gymnast, so you know the, the CrossFit is right up the alley. She just she just loves it, man. Uh, she talks very high level. She wants me to come in there, but I, that ain't happening. That ain't happening. That's, that's, that's too. too right, you don't like getting bruised up. Well. <laughs> It's a little bit too much work for me as far as, okay. you know. Because right. you never went to the weight room anyhow. Well, first of all, I wasn't a weight room guy. And then right. to have to be in there and they they, they sound like they, they do a good job of pushing people. I don't want to be pushed. I got to <laughs> do it on my own plan. So don't tell me to, to keep going. So that's it. <laughs> but they do an outstanding right. job over there. All right. Now it's time to bring on a guy that played wide receiver like he was in a CrossFit workout. Every time he stepped on the field, that's AC Tellison. AC, welcome to the uh, Lamar Thomas Show. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate this, LT. How's it going, bro? Everything is good. Man. Everything is great, AC. Uh, AC uh, you know, we're gonna start it off. We're not before we get to the other news. We want just like with any other guest, we want to tell your story about 
how you got to the University of Miami from Bay City, Texas. Well, why, why? Okay, well, let, yeah, let, let me start here. If you start throwing out those dates to me like you were doing to Lamar, uh, to uh, Gino, this thing is going to go downhill real fast. Cause I, <laughs> I know you're using a cheat sheet, but I think Gino was going off the cuff. And I was like, I was impressed. I'm like, well, shit, Gino only looked that old and like he's got dementia, but he, he, was, he was on with those. I, I, I was really impressed. I was like, damn. <laughs> That's a good way to yeah, start your, your part of the show, man. I uh, know, right? Yeah, I love hey, you. know, man. I texted him a month ago because I, I knew, I don't know if Gary knew, I think Gary probably did, that you were involved with this. Right. And I texted him and I said, it's right. AC, right? He, goes, he doesn't even respond. Now we, now everybody knows the answer. What was the reason why we couldn't talk about it? Yeah, with that, it was, it was yeah, it was a lot of moving parts, uh, just trying to get, and we'll talk about that, but it was a lot of moving parts, and until I got, we got things in place, and I think my partner, I think that he's on the, he's on the line, he's, is he on? Uh, Victor Robinson? I, I told him to log in, because he can kind of go. He is, he's there, yeah, I don't see Victor his. Robinson. He can go into detail. Yeah. You don't see his picture? Yeah, yeah he's, he's the one that drug me into this, and we can talk about that, but, so, Bay City, huh, Lamar? Yeah, let's talk about Bay City yeah, so, uh, before we getting this gold. Why? Yeah, gee, um, why Miami? Yeah. To be honest with you, my first cousin is Hartley Dykes. And yeah. okay. by the time I graduated, he had put every school in the South in my area on probation. So, um, <laughs> Did he go to Oklahoma uh, State? He, he went to Oklahoma State. Yeah, yeah, that's my first cousin. There's a lot of truth Hartley was that. a hell of a hell of an athlete. He was an All American in three sports: drafted in like, baseball, hey, basketball. Yeah, he was. But yeah, every school down there was on probation, and they would just come to the school and they would look at me like, "You're not going to come here, right?" And I'm like, "No, I'm not going to come here." But um, yeah, uh, I think I got my first letter from Jimmy Johnson, and of course he moved on. I think I was a sophomore at the time or whatever, and he moved on. And I always kept Miami in mind, but you would only see like highlights because you know TV wasn't like it is now. You can you can see everything, and I was thinking, okay, that's Miami. I know they're putting up a lot of points, and I remember Tester Verde with the Heisman. And I was walking by TV one day, and I saw this band in Miami colors, and they was getting down. It was girl. I was like, oh my. God, if that's Miami band, I'm on my way. So what was it, Florida? And it took the Florida it was Florida and them. Came to Miami <laughs> looking for those guys. <laughs> well, I, I felt like somebody pulled a fast one on me. You came to Miami because of Florida AM, man. <laughs> not that's because of Florida AM. So <laughs> not not because of Florida AM, but you like you say, we didn't have a lot of TV access. It was no rewind. Right. I was right. walking by a TV. They were talking South Florida, Florida, whatever, and I see this band jamming with all these girls in Miami colors, and I'm like, yo, yep, I'm on. Couldn't rewind it, so got to Miami and didn't see none of that, <laughs> none of it. Actually, the opposite. So, so you, uh, so you were in, you were in uh, Dennis's first recruiting class. You get to Miami, and what do you what what you get down there? What do you see as far as like the the you 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 the receivers, obviously. Yeah, so, well, let me just back up. So, like I say, you, we didn't have the internet or nothing. So, you just, they would get letters or whatever in Miami. You knew Miami advice. And, you know, you're talking to this coach and you don't sound like Miami. You kind of sound a little country, which was uh, Coach Tommy Tuberville. And I'm thinking, okay, oh. well, that, that, you know, I, don't, I, don't, I haven't seen this guy. And then him and Coach Erickson show up on a visit and it's just, two white guys sitting in my living room talking Miami. And, but you look at the players and the players don't look like the coaches. And I'm like, Oh, shit. <laughs> you know? So when they left, my mom looking at me and she was like, uh, you sure you want to go down there to Miami? And I'm like, yeah, we'll give it up. Give it up. But yeah, I came in on my visit. Uh, it was during basketball season. So it was one of those times I would play Friday and take off on Saturday and only could stand to Sunday. So mm -hmm. I was extremely exhausted, but I came in and I'm looking and, you know, I saw Lamar and I'm like, okay, shit, he's about 162 pounds. I'm like, this is going to be easy. This is going to be easy. <laughs> I'm like, if this is a receiver, because at the time I think I was, I was about 6'3", about 205. I had lost some weight because of basketball and I saw right. Lamar and I'm like, man, this is going to be easy. This is going to be easy. 
So I went back home, had a couple of trips. I originally c committed to USC, and I just had a change of heart at the last minute. Didn't sign on signing date, came to Miami. I just felt like, you know, my high school coach told me, because I played mostly quarterback. I only played one year receiver, and I was able to put up all state numbers. And then I went back to quarterback. And he said, listen, if you want to be the best, you have to go and play with the best. He said, it's going to be a grind because you're going to have to make the adjustment. But that's where you need to go. And and sure enough, that, that, that's how it happened. I came on to you know, Miami. Your junior year. Let's skip to your junior year. because right, Here you go with these dates again. Here, well, here we go. Let's go. Well, I'm skipping to the junior year because I know what happened in the first couple of years. Cause I All was, right, right. You were right. behind me, so. Right. You know, you, you you snuck in there a couple of times, and uh, well, yeah, let, let, let's go back to that uh, the, the game, the first game that I snuck in after the hurricane. <laughs> so you got to mind you know what you come to a school like Miami and you get red shirted, and you, you leave Texas and you're a big name. You come to Miami and you just kind of like disappear for a couple of years. Nobody know where the hell you at, or you still there, <laughs> or whatever. And then after the hurricane, you know, all eyes was on Miami because they didn't know what, you know, what was going on. Could would we have a team? Would we recover? What would happen? And we had that first game against Iowa. And I, I knew I had a good spring and I had a good summer camp. And, you know, Lamar was in and out of practice, right, during that time? Kind of in and out some, in and out. I was in and out of something. Sound like jail. Right. But go ahead. right. Yeah. So, <laughs> So Coach Erickson came to him and said, hey, man, you got to start. You know, everything, you know, you know what's going on with Lamar. And uh, you're going to have the start. And, hey, we, we're we going to let you go. And I'm like, all right, this is this is perfect. And I was like, damn. I didn't know nothing about, you know, I was just thinking, you know, Lamar got into some trouble. I knew it was a little federal or whatever. And I'm thinking, well, shit, if, if keeping Lamar in jail or wherever the hell he is, is going to give me some playing time. <laughs> I'm all for it. I'm all for it. You know. So what do you Definitely do? One, well, you wrote the judge a letter saying, "Why don't you just move his his trial up another six months?" He would have. I, I, he would, I would have. have if I if I knew how to get in touch with it. But I definitely wasn't going to be wearing no free Lamar Thomas T-shirts. I, I wasn't going to be doing that. So, uh, so you know, everything said. You know, when you start, you sit. At the front of the plane and i'm like damn is this what it's like up here and i'm just chilling and i'm got to start i'm going over my playbook and now gino's speaking to me now because i'm in the huddle with the first team and shit we i think we we land and we get there and dinner coach olsen uh i, I remember to this day he said ac you know lamar is on his way and I'm like, on his way where? where he's coming to the game. I said, wait, they're going to let him play? Yeah, he's going to be able to play. I mean, he's like, don't worry, you're still going to start. And that didn't sit well with me because I knew I knew something. It wasn't good. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm, so I'm fucking tossing and turning. I'm like, I, I, I heard Vernon Maxwell give this interview because I've told everybody back home, I'm starting. To start is my coming out party. And I just felt like they're gonna throw a fast one on me, not start me. I told my everybody was watching back in Bay City, and I'm like, if Lamar coming, then oh man, okay. So, uh, but I get the start. Lamar comes. I'm like, all right, he warms up. He's a little winded. I'm like, okay, all right. I get the start, and Lamar comes into the game. Uh, well, let me back up. Gino threw me a pass in this game, and then let me just I'm gonna say this fast forward. I'm gonna go back. Gino threw me a pass in the game, uh, early in the game. And I'm like, damn, okay. And then it, it kind of like the the game plan kind of shifted away. from. I, I, I've never seen someone scheme against one of their own players. I'm like, what the hell? I said, I know when Lamar is in his position, he is catching balls right, left, and center. And I think Gino threw me like a token hitch just to be like, you know, here. Congratulations. Congratulations. And then like a week later in the locker room, Gino was sitting on the couch or sofa and he was tired and he wanted some Gatorade. And he told me, hey, give me some Gatorade. And he said, I'm like, all right, get your own damn Gatorade. He was like, you remember that pass I threw you, AC? You won't get another one of those. I'm like, oh, shit, let me get this Gatorade. <laughs> so, so, yeah, but I uh, got the start. Lamar came in and kind of finished. I would give I I was giving him a breather. And and I just felt like you know what the, Lamar could run all day. Yeah, guy was in Lamar. Listen, despite you look at him and 
the way he acts, he's probably one of the most intelligent football players I've ever been around. A lot of those guys. I mean, a lot of those guys, you know, Warren Sapp, he's a genius. Jesse, um, we had a lot of guys that were really smart, intelligent, Mike Barrow, just football players. And uh, I learned a lot from Lamar. And uh, I just remember that whole season. I'm like, well, shit, I won't start again unless, unless Lamar get in trouble. So <laughs> I used to just go up to Coach Erickson's office and be like, hey, Coach, you, you, you know Lamar didn't go to class this week. <laughs> You know, Lamar broke curfew. Just, just trying anything to get Lamar back sideline, but, but that didn't work. But man, playing behind Lamar, it, although it was frustrating, uh, I, I learned a lot. He was a smart, smart football player. He really taught me a lot. He worked his ass off. He, and uh, I, I owe a lot to him because uh, he taught me a lot. Well, I can tell you this: one of the reasons why you didn't play a lot was because I looked at it like this. You were about 6'3", about two-something. You could run, you could catch, you could jump. I, I can't let him get on the field. Yeah, that's I understand what, that. That's, 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 that's when, you, when you're winning. When, you're, when you have a good team, there are guys behind you that are just as good. And right. And you me, meant that literally, I, too. You meant that literally because, I, good Lord. I said, man, there's no way this dude, he's big, he's physical, good looking guy. He's gonna take all my girlfriends and shit. You know, I, I, I can't let him get on the field. Hell no. Coach Harris is like, hey, you gonna let AC play son? No, nah, not this week, Coach. Yeah, but that's what made you guys great. You were afraid of your backups. I don't think that's yeah. going on anymore. All you guys, no matter what position you were, it was your backups that you, know, you busted your asses in practices. And you didn't want these guys in the field, but the competition you, was incredible. You knew you knew that if AC got in the game and made one big play, that was going to be a lot of pressure on me. Dang. Right. But yeah. Uh, but I, think, I, think, I think you and Gino had something, man. Yeah, that, that game, boy, I tell you what. I'm like, I, look, he just – I ran the same route Lamar did, and he got the ball, and Gino looked, looked me off. I'm like, shit, I'm a big deco out here, but – but I remember that me, Chris T, and jo Jonathan Harris, we yeah. just used to, you know, if if Jonathan caught two balls, we would just divide it. Hey, you know, you got one, three the fourths afros. of a pass. We just afros, yeah, the afros, yeah. America's finest receivers on Saturday. That's what they call themselves. Yeah, hey, Steve, what was your best man. game? What was your best game? Uh, my best okay. game, um, I would probably say. Like Syracuse, not on, not not because of any touchdowns or whatever, but I caught like three or four key third down to keep the drive moving, and that Carrier Dome was a tough place to play in. So they developed that. They put me at a slot inside receiver. It was almost like Ryan would call it a tight end, but I stayed away from the word tight end. Uh, and they would put me in there, and every third down, and I would just you know keep the chains moving. So not because of touchdowns or amount of yards. I just think I caught three or four key well, third that, downs. That's that's the the game. Third down. Yeah, and yeah. Average so, 21 yards a catch your junior year. Yeah, I averaged 21 yards a catch my junior year. I uh, I messed around and caught a pass that went for zero yards, and had I been focused in and paying attention, I would have knocked it down. I think that lowered my average a little bit. Uh, but, you know, I was bouncing between Ryan and uh, – Costa, but I had a secret that anytime Ryan scrambled, I would just go deep. I would just take off. And I'm behind everybody. So anytime Ron, you know, it, the offensive line was still getting things together. Uh, and anytime I saw Ryan in a little distress, I would just take off deep. And he was so instead of coming towards him, you would go the other way. I'd go deep. I'd go deep. Yeah, I'd go deep. <laughs> <laughs> nobody gonna run. Those. Wasn't nobody gonna run with you. That was the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, sure. yeah. yeah I would just, I, I would just run deep, and Ryan, Ryan would find me, and we had a, we had a good thing going there for a while. That's a good thing. And yeah. the next, the next time, let's say, you go, you, you get drafted by the Browns, and you spend a little time there. The Browns, Redskins, Rams, Bills, and Dolphins. Yeah, jumped around, jumped around. Actually, yeah, I went to the Browns, and I hurt my shoulder in the championship game, so I really wasn't quite healed. So they told me, listen, we drafted you to pretty much put you on the practice squad, let you get, let you get healed up. And what happened is if you're on the practice squad, anybody could pick you up. So I yeah. think the team was away one Saturday, and the Redskins called, and 
And I had an agent that was, you know, said, hey, they're going to pay you more money. Just go screw them guys. They're not, they not looking out for you. And I took off and went to Washington and went there and was up a week. And they put me on their damn practice court. And at the time, the Browns had, they had Andre Risen, Keenan McCardle, Michael Jackson, Derek Alexander. So they were stacked. So it really was set up for me to just chill out because the next year they was going to to Cleveland, which is to um, Baltimore, which is a funny story. I remember my rookie year going to my first training camp. It was a bunch of fans yelling out, hey, don't go, stay, don't go. And I'm like, what the, what the hell are they talking about? I, I just got here. I didn't know anything <laughs> about them, about the going to – to St. Louis, uh, going moving over to Baltimore, uh, I didn't know about that. But when I look back, I just should have been patient, stayed there. Because what happens is you don't get the type of love that you get from the team that drafted you. Right. And I remember right. Ozzie Newsom telling me, he said, AC, we drafted you for a reason. You didn't call us. You didn't. You just took off and left. And we found out that you're in Washington when from the waiver or whatever. And he said, now you're going to – bounce around from practice squad, the team, and, and Dan, Dan, he was right. And uh, I ended up in the Dolphins my second year, and it was a gang of canes down there. I was actually having a great camp. Um, Fred Barnett had blew out his his ACL, and that, you know, kind of tore it up, and normally that would take you a year, and and I was I was in there, and here comes Lamar again. Oh, my God, man, here comes Lamar. <laughs> Coming from the Bucks. No. Uh, no Ironically, he was coming out of jail again. I think so. <laughs> <I'm just, laughs> yeah, I was. Well, Literally, the only player was get twice. It's deja vu. He comes out of jail again. <laughs> and I get there. He's getting in shape. And I'm like, all right, all right. And I think uh, I was in front of Lamar or whatever. And, and, it, it felt, listen, it felt so good coming out the game, telling Lamar, all right, get in there. Hey, go get him, kid. <laughs> Taking off my helmet, speaking Gatorade, coaching him up on the sideline because he was still getting familiar with the plays. And was it a, almost the last preseason game? Bernie was there and Lamar was there. I were out there and I was, I had finished my reps. I was out of the game just watching. I'm like, boom, boy, they going to. Get rid of Lamar. I'm gonna be here. And I right. remember. Hey, we got a guy in the lobby that wants to talk about the Florida Beach Bowl. All right, all right, all right. This is my last one. I remember. People, get me out here. Get me out here. Right, right. I'm gonna but finish that- this story because this this is where y'all. I remember specifically saying, "It's not enough time to do much, but just run it out." And something happened, and. Kozar threw Lamar like an 80 some year bomb. And I don't know if it won the game or whatever it did. The next day, Lamar was on the front page and he gave the damn ball to Jimmy Johnson. And I'm like, oh, yeah. You got cut. And got cut. Sure enough, Jimmy called me in there and like, AC, hey, you know, I, I got a lot of canes around here. It's not enough room for all of you guys. So uh, he said, listen, I'm going to wave you, but stick around. St. Louis will pick you up, and you can and, – and that's what happened. They had a little trade with Billy Milner coming over with Troy Drayton, and they knew I would end up with the Rams. So, you know, thanks, to LT, but uh, definitely, definitely appreciate that one, man. Well, Twice I, out of jail. Got me. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> Twice out of you. <laughs> it's all so loved. All right, let's get to some business, man. So, so let's talk about this Florida Beach Bowl, okay? With the name, the teams have been announced. Can you say the names of the team? Yes, sir. In fact, I'm gonna let my good. This is my partner, uh, uh, Victor. He brought me into this venture. This was a dream of his, and he's a friend of uh, Roundel's. And Roundel gave him my name, and he ran the idea by me. So I'm gonna. I'm going to let Victor take it from here, and then I'll just chime in when you need me. Go ahead, Victor. Can I? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, yes, we can hear you. Don't don't say I'm random friend too loud, man. Okay, <laughs> that's not a badge of honor. But uh, thank you, Lamar, for having us on the show, man. Don't remember? I don't think you remember me, but I, we know each other. Where we where we hang out at? Don't. Get them but te- <laughs> just, man, just text me. Just text me off the air. Text me off the air. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> That's more like it. That's more like it. Nah, but um, the Florida Beach Bowl, man, we have we were able to select two great teams. One from the SEAC, which is um Fort Valley State, 
The other one from the CIAA, which is uh, Justin C. Smith. Both of them have a big fan base in Florida. They both end up their season seven and three. And they play a good brand of football, man. And one of the reasons that people was like, hey, you had a team that was eight and two. Why did you skip the team that, that was eight and two to pick a team that was seven and three? But they don't look at scheduling. People don't look at scheduling, don't look at matchup, don't look like traveling. When you actually, you Lamar, you know a lot about this because, you know, AC telling me how involved you are with the bowl game. So I'm pretty sure he had these conversations with you as well. When you're picking two teams to come play in a different city, you have to make sure these, these teams are equipped for that. Mm-hmm. Meaning for us like fan base, the, the support from the alumni, the sponsors. There's a lot that goes into actually selecting two bowl games. The difference between the classic and a bowl game, the classic, there's a year, there's a year and something for those team alumni and student base to get, they know where they're going. Mm-hmm. But when you talk about picking a team within three months, two months, to actually, actually two months, to actually get all their friends together, to actually come to a new city, and the first year picking a bowl game, you better make the right choice. You know, because if you don't, it'll be you, Lamar, uh, yeah. <laughs> Randall Hill, AC yes. Telefit, and, and the TV crew. Yeah, you it's know? actually less than two months. One month, one month, yeah, almost, one month. almost one month from the time we picked the team. I think that was the hardest decision we had to make. Mm-hmm. It wasn't it, the record is good. You got to pick based on football because you want a good football game. Mm-hmm. But Lamar, you know, as being a coach, you got to know what the defensive line look like, what mm-hmm. the offensive line look like. Can they compete against each other? Because the worst thing that you want to have to start a bowl game is a blowout. That'll be your first and last. Right. So I'll let AC jump in, and I definitely want your opinion, Lamar, because I do look at you as a committee member. But but there there is a backstory to the game, right? Definitely is a backstory. They, they don't they don't really those two teams don't really vibe with each other. Well, the backstory to the game first is that the athletic director used um at that the the commissioner used to be that leg director at um uh, Fort Valley. Okay. He be and that's the that's in CIAA. So. He actually became the commissioner in a SEAC who's a team, and he's playing against a team that he left as the AD. So basically, he did the zigzag. Uh. You know what I mean? He left one job for another to come back to the job he left. Okay. And then um, what what uh, what Johnson C. Smith did to uh, Fort Valley was that they stole their coach. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. so they took their coach and now so that you know when it the transfer portal came alive so right. there was talk out there that certain coaches were trying to you know approach other kids so they really don't like each other right so so it's it's better to say get to the game early for some yeah, yeah, yeah yeah we just hope it, <laughs> We just hope they don't want to end up in jail like you, Lamar. That's all. <laughs> Listen, if Lamar go to jail, something's good going to happen to him when he gets out. Or, or, or maybe something bad is going to happen to me when he gets out. So, but, yeah, but, but when you think so, about this so, bowl game, this bowl game was created to give historically black universities a, a, a chance to plan a bowl game. As we know, last year, you look at FAMU, that well, I don't think they went nine and three. Their first game was against Carolina with 21 players deemed ineligible. At the time, they really were not. Didn't play. They had a competitive game. But at the end of the season, they didn't get a playoff bid, so they set home. And if you look up and down the HBCU s- schedule, you'll see a bunch of teams that are nine and two, eight and three, seven and three, that will not get a chance to play in the playoff game. And there's no bowl game out there for them. So what Victor came up with this idea, uh, you know, let's create a bowl game. He brought it to me. And now we kind of made it out of a business model that we were going to try to create other bowl games for these schools that are n- never get to, never get a chance. I remember um, how excited the kids were when they um, we announced that they're going to be a part of the bowl. And the coach said something that really struck me. He said, you know, 
some of these kids will graduate before the bowl game. So there was a chance that those kids would have, you know, graduated and their last game was a victory and seven and three and it ended right there. Think about being eight and two or nine and two or eight and three and you don't have hope to get into the playoffs. And if you do get into the playoffs, they're shipping one team over to Pennsylvania in the mountains somewhere. They don't have the infrastructure. It's going to cost them money to travel. It was built that we are the, first of all, we're the only private owned bowl game. I think uh, Procter & Gamble owns three bowl games. ESPN in, in, in owns 40. The 44th bowl game is owned by Victor and myself. And what we did differently, because we're dealing with schools that are underserved, our model is that our purse goes directly to the university. So we know that the the money is going where it's needed. And and that's that's my little spill on it, just a little background on how and why this bowl game was created. It was created as an equal opportunity bowl game and also to level the playing field. AC, I don't know where Lamar went, but <laughs> he disappeared on us here for a minute. But uh, how do people get tickets for the game, and, and how much are they? Well, you can go to FloridaBeachBowl.com. The tickets are all over Ticket Master, Ticket Key, and all over. But the main thing is go to our website. It will redirect you to uh, Ticket Master and other But um, tickets, we had a lot of ticket requests, a lot of Tra um, traffic to our website and the ticket starts at um, 15 15 dollars for like the standing room only it goes up to 75 dollars for the premium tickets and we also have some extra tickets where they are like you know we have our own club live over there at the drive pink stadium you know you have fun lamar you know we got a bottle waiting there for you so don't don't <laughs> worry you know you know so <laughs> so yeah definitely definitely it's gonna be a fun we have six days of events from the golf tournament, a uh, 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 coaching function, uh, a prayer brunch. Uh, we have the 5K run. We have the um, we have fan fest. Listen, this is not a classic. This is an NCAA sanctioned bowl game. It was hard as hell to actually get. We right now joking around with it, but it was not easy to make to obtain that sanction because, like like um, AC would tell you, they are. There are 41 bowl games. Florida Citrus on two. Okay? Florida Citrus Sports on two. And now you know that's a major company. The ESPN on the other 39. And mind you, so there's no minority, and not just no minority, there's not an individual period who own a bowl game. So for us, it's a great feat. I think it's a lot of responsibility. And we, we have chosen the committee carefully. And we put a lot of different efforts, sweat, blood, tear, money behind it. And for it to come to fruition, as it's coming out, we really happy, man. And we just want to celebrate this for this Florida, for a lot of the area, Miami area. So I saw on social media the two teams, uh, Johnson C. Smith and Fayetteville, those kids were pretty. Fort Valley. Fort Valley. Fort Valley. Fort Valley. I'm sorry, Fort Valley. They were very excited about the opportunity. Yes, to play in a bowl game. Yes, sir. And so for the conferences to see this and these these teams, and, and let's say, you know, um, for next year, now I'm not, not trying to jump ahead, but just say for next year, some of these other teams that are uh, one double A, there's an option. There's an option for them to not go and, and be put in a hole going to a playoff game. They can go to a bowl game. And actually collect some for the school, for the for the program, and basically have a good time. Think about it, a whole week of Lamar. Destiny. You've been in my email, Lamar. You've been in my email. <laughs> I have received at least like six different emails from the um, schools that I won't name because you know we yeah. didn't put them in the bowl game. Correct. But these same schools you guys, HBCU love. We talking about FCF schools. Same thing Lamar saying. So the interest is there. You'll be crazy to go like the way college football worked for uh, HBCUs. You do not make money going to the playoff. It's not like you going to the bowl game series when you actually a Division One FBS football. You you win the championship by playing in bowl games, right? Your first game is in a bowl game. Guess what you're getting? A purse. Your second game, if you win, is a purse. 
Division two, Division one, HBC. Get, the only thing that you you getting, they pay for your travel sometimes, which is not enough. We know a school that went to the playoff last year, and they one hundred twenty five thousand dollars in a hole. This is definitely a better option. <laughs> yes. Oh, in, if, in if nothing, that, in the home that if, Messi built. Yes, in the home that Messi built. If nothing else. If we start bringing these type of bowl games into fruition, mm -hmm. the playoff series and how they do business may change. They may look and say, hey, these teams are opting out of the playoffs to go in these bowl games. Maybe we should do something about paying them to play in these playoff, in these playoff games. So either way, uh, we're looking to kind of change the game and kind of even the playing field. It's a, you know, you got thousands of kids every year that get shut out. And we just want to you know, give them an opportunity. Uh, just one more game for some of these kids. So that's what we're doing. So, all you know, you talk about your emails. I'm I'm sure that you guys have heard from a <laughs> hundred <be> schools. <laughs> You'll be surprised, man. And the funny thing, Lamar, about this is that, and Gary, you could be a testament to that too as well. A lot of the sponsors will come in and say, why haven't somebody else done this before? The, the resistance that we get from people, this is such a great idea. Why somebody hasn't done it before? I said, just like somebody, it took somebody to build Yahoo, right? Without it a took doubt. To build Mercedes Benz. Just because somebody hasn't done it doesn't mean it's not going to work. Mm. Well, I hope you guys are getting support. It's a, it's a great, great idea, great concept. I'm sure it's been a lot of work. And, Tons uh, of work. Really, really hard on you guys, but I, you know, I hope they they bring some fan bases with them, and you guys are able to come out of this okay and build on it. Definitely. That's the goal. That's the goal. Well, just talking to AC um, through this process, I think these two schools will be perfect a perfect fit for the first first game down here to uh, Florida Beach Bowl. I think it's uh, as long as they bring in their bands. The bands they, are coming. They coming. The band, hey, look. We, you gonna play golf, man? Huh? You gonna be able to play some golf? Yeah, yeah, I might be able to get out there a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I'm not that good, <laughs> but I might be able that's to get all, out there a little bit. That's all Lamar uh, does now. Yeah, but now we're, we we have a press conference tomorrow. Okay. We have a virtual press conference tomorrow on um, it's on our TV um partners um HBCU um plus. Okay. And Lamar probably, I mean um. AC, AC will share that information with you guys. I guess we get up the air. Well, you guys can come in and definitely would love for you to be there, um, Lamar. And because you know you are part of the team, and you you actually been supporting us since day one. Lamar jokes a lot on here, man. But listen, I think he, a, from what I heard from AC, from what he been doing for us, man. I'll be honest, he really support the bowl game from just from the advisory role and also the support and guiding us. So. You are part of Florida Beach Bowl, my brother. So, I appreciate it. I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to coming to the Dry Pink Stadium, enjoying this this that whole week. I'm gonna be just like the uh, the, the the people from those schools. I'm coming down and enjoy myself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, be that home and, and don't enjoy yourself too much, or you'll be using those attorneys that you just yeah, yeah, posted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not not that much, not that much. But man, hey, but hey, hey guys, I, on a serious note, man, I I'm so proud of you guys and what you guys put together. I can't wait to see this thing uh, go through, and uh, it's a great great deal you guys put together, and uh, many more to come. How about that? Sounds Thank good, you. man. Appreciate it. Thanks for the platform, man. Love you, bro. Best of luck, guys. All right. Thank Thank you. Appreciate you guys coming on. Appreciate you, AC. Right. I'll see you this weekend. Okay. All right. Uh, let's bring uh, Bruce back in here. Wow. And um, I guess uh, Saturday at noon, man. I mean, I don't even know what I, I, I'm like. I don't even know what I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> this season has just been crazy. I've been like yakking it up with the guys on the on the the comments here uh, for the last twenty minutes or so. Um, there it is. I hope it comes together. You know, uh, TBD, I hope they're selling tickets because I don't he, know. If they're selling tickets. Oh, they're they're they're, they're 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 trying hard to sell tickets. But TVD met with the media today. 
And um, I was going to try to put it on the screen. I don't know where. It, it was yeah. on the screen. There it is. You had did, it come up? did it come up? Yep. There it is. Oh, you guys are seeing it. I'm not. I want to accomplish that? my dreams of playing in the NFL. Would do my best. And I love the game. But I'm not going to let that consume my happiness. I don't want to be upset the rest of the rest of my life because football doesn't go my way. So he's trying to get his head together, you know, to, to some... there more to that. No, no, there was a whole bunch more. Yeah. But that, that was just a little piece that we pulled out, but you know, he, he's trying to clear his mind. He's trying to, you know, get his head together and, and, and come out there and play a good game Saturday. They need him to Lamar. I mean, um, this is a game. You got him at home. It's national TV. You've had a whole month and a half of disappointment here. Major disappointment. And they, they just need something good to happen that validates all the work they've put in and the progress that they've made. Yeah. That, that's, and, and, and uh, to be honest with you, talking to the, some of the coaches at Louisville, they were already setting up for the be able. They, they thought that if they could win and be in, they were going to bench. They weren't going to play a lot of their players because they thought they were in the ACC championship, you know. And that, that was the whole thing. Talking to the, some of their coaches, they're like, "Hey, if we if we can get in. We're not going to play our guys against uh against you guys." But now they got to play them. Uh, I think the two teams are, are kind of similar in a way. Uh, they both like to run the football. Um, I think we have a better passing game, but I don't put anything past Jeff Brown because he's a hell of a coordinator. He is. Um, and he knows he's a he's a he's a Petrino disciple and he knows the offense and, um, you know, their defense. Eh, you know, I think our defense is better. Uh, so, you know, we just got to go out and ex execute. That, I think that's what it boils down to, executing and not turning the ball over. It's, it's simple football. Don't turn the ball over and just execute and just be consistent. You know, if you want to run the ball, run it, but hit them with a play action pass every now and then. Get those safeties to suck down, throw it over the top, complete the pass, make some plays, make plays for your quarterback, um, you know, and, and that's – that's the way I see it. I don't. I really don't think Louisville is that good. My, myself personally, uh, I've watched them, but this season has been crazy. If you allow yeah. this team to play with you, they'll look like world beaters, and we'll have to try to figure it out. I'm just yeah. thinking we go out there and do what we're supposed to do. We'll win the game, going away. I, I All right, think, Bruce, parting thoughts. I think that we've come from behind minus ten points four times this year. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen on Saturday. We're going to beat these guys. I think for the first time in a long time, we're going to come out and jump on them. I think we have to get the crowd, whatever crowd there is involved. It's Geno's day. I think Miami's going to come out and jump on these guys. And it sounds to me, based on what Lamar just said, these guys are a little cocky. Oh, yeah. Well, we're going to have to play our guys because we need this game. That's crap. I, I, got, I, I, got, I got knocked off. Of here because one of their coaches was calling me the brand to talk to talk crap. Oh, so, crap. crap. Yeah. See, I, I, I think I think if we jump on these guys, I think we're gonna beat these guys. I think we win by a field goal. I do. I don't think we're gonna. I don't think we're gonna play poorly. I think it's kind of like out of our system already. We're not going anywhere. We're six and four. Let's just go out there, as you guys used to say, and kick some ass. Just kick their ass and be crushing coming. like bugs. That's what. Yeah. Crushing That's what like I think is gonna happen. Against Boston College, don't ask me because if it's cold, which yeah, it's cold let's, up there let's work, now. On, let's work on one game at a time. I hear one you. game at a time, man. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you. All right, Bruce. Hey, guys. Hey, Bruce, we'll see you. hey you 9 o'clock. Do you have AC's number? Yes, I'll send it to All you. Right. Hey, yeah, 930. Call me. Give him my number. 930. Get your tailgate on. We, we'll be there at 930. I'll be, I'll be there with Caesar. Okay. All he's right. saying he's down here again. All right. All right, bye -bye. Bruce. All right. See you guys. Yep. All right, LT, let's do yep. some quick word word association here right. and bring this team thing home. Uh, Gino Toretta. My man, Gino Marino, my guy. Um, hey, man, I'm, I'm so ex happy for him. 
Um, you know, I think back, he, he changed my life when he, uh, he convinced me to stay. So, you know, we've been, uh, cool, cool with each other for years, you know, and I think that to me was a big thing. You know, he, he, he told me the truth and said, Hey, you might want to stay here and it's going to work out for you. And it did. So I'm always trust him and hopefully he always trust me. And, you know, I, I'm just happy for him. He deserves it. And, um, you know, he was my quarterback. Jacoby George. Jacoby George is playing out of his mind right now. And that's a good thing because somebody is going to have to step up. You know, obviously young, Restrepo, those guys, you know, um, Restrepo, double cover, young, inconsistent at times. George has probably played the best out of all of them. Um, and he's, he's quietly putting together a good year. And so I, I want to see that continues. Uh, kudos to uh, to Kevin Beard and, and Cooney. The job they've done with those receivers, they're doing a hell of a job. Uh, they're playing well. Uh, you know, but as we well know, it's all about the quarterback play. So hopefully he can bounce back, which brings me to TVD. Well, you, you said that he's, he's, uh, he sounds like his head is a lot clearer because I think that's what's holding him back right now. Inside his head, it gotta be a lot of confusion because right now he does not look like the same. He has not looked like the same guy since Texas a &M. And so if he can somehow find that magic for these next couple games, it's going to be beautiful, but he has to find that magic and he has to, um, they got to put together a game plan, put together a game plan where you take it out of his hands in a way where the completions are there. The run game is there. Everything is there. Don't let him think too much and let's let him go out and play. And Help him out a little bit. Let him, yeah, let him throw, build some confidence. Throw the ball around the yard a little bit. How about that? He, he's been uh, going back and watching tapes of his good games from 2021. Right. The Texas A&M game, for example, to remind himself of what he can be. Great idea, you know, in, in my opinion. All right, LT. Well, we'll see what happens uh, in this new adventure on on Saturday. I'm looking forward to seeing all you guys and seeing uh, Gino get his jersey retired. Um, we got to thank uh, Gino for coming on tonight. AC mm -hmm. Tellison, the Florida Beach Bowl, for giving us a little insight into how that game came together. We got to thank Canesware, our presenting sponsor, mm -hmm. um, for hosting you tonight. Uh, the largest cane store ever created. Tons of great merchandise in there. Lamar showed you some of the jackets tonight. Get yourself over to Canesware at 2655 South University Drive in Davie or at canesware.com. Uh, we got to thank, obviously, the Florida Beach Bowl and the law firm of Rotson and Faxadomo, where you can get great, aggressive representation from skilled criminal lawyers if you get yourself in trouble. From Williamson Cadillac, where Lamar goes to buy his fine automobiles that everybody sees him driving around in. And then Life Athletics, where Lamar's wife goes to get herself all bruised up and in shape. <laughs> uh, they're at 12330 Southwest 53rd Street in Cooper City, Florida. Um, if you want to get yourself a good workout and uh, like free I said, classes. Yourself, three they, free classes too. Yeah, they will uh, They will work you over over <laughs> there at Life Athletics. All right, LT, big week for the Canes. We'll be back next Wait, Wednesday night. We can't forget about – Oh, we can't know, forget about La Spada. Yeah, we can't forget about La Spada. I'm gonna the tell home this, of Lamar's uh, ham and cheese sandwich. I'm going to tell this uh, tonight. Mm -mm. You is. eat that late, huh? Wow. Yeah, I, I I usually take a bite or two, then I go home and finish half finish of it, it and then right. save the rest of it for the next save day. Save the other half for lunch tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty big, man. It's, it's yeah. pretty big, but it's great. It's great. All right, and of course, we thank everybody for watching um, tonight and 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 um, watching the replays during the week. Uh, we will be back next Wednesday night to uh, chop it up. Wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving and uh, see how the Canes do against Louisville. So for Lamar, I'm Gary. Thanks again, everybody. We'll see you next time. Go Canes.